Welcome to episode three of the Seventh Hour Podcast. I'm your host, KJ, and I'm here with the signature guys. We've got Paul, Dan, Will, and Daniel, plus two extras. We've got Tony from First Take and the queen herself, Miss Debbie Cleveland from Dynasty, whose shirt I'm rocking today. So Mm -hmm. it's going to be an awesome episode. Stick around. Here. All right, we're back. But so for real, your old baritone auditioned to be in first take. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us how that. Yeah. Grew. Matt Clancy uh, was um, we were we only had two people come in person and sing with us after uh, Christian Hoff left. He Christian is now Christian Douglas um, right. on stage. He's doing the national tour of Moulin Rouge. Oh, he's um, such a stud. He's absolutely he's incredible, a- amazing performer and uh, musician. And we, you know, we we love singing with Christian. But the timing of his schedule and what yeah. we do weren't really compatible over time. And so we all agreed that it was right for us to move forward. But if Christian ever needs a quartet, we're his quartet. So <laughs> who are you going to kick out when he wants to come back? Uh, I don't know. I probably <laughs> probably me. Just just say, like, yeah. It sounds like you're, I mean, yeah. I think I feel it's, like your quartet's pretty established now. For right? sure. So, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we were looking for uh, singers and Alex was available. Um, and we weren't really looking for tenors. We were looking for baritones and Matt was, easily our best option for baritone. He was a great fit for the quartet personally. He was a great fit musically, just yeah. a really good guy. We had a great time together singing a bunch of music and it sounded awesome. And uh, Alex came in and was just also a great fit and we had to make the call about what we thought was the the right fit moving forward from a personal perspective, from a musical perspective. And for sure. Alex is just world-class singer and yeah, yeah. he's really there's something special there that was obvious for us. So. Well, for sure. And I think obviously the best the best thing to come out of that is you singing lead again. Mm. Uh, thanks. Definitely. I mean that is Amen. Amen. Agreed. Amen. Agreed. I, yeah. I said to the Give Me Four guys in the last episode, I said it's Tony not singing lead is like a Ferrari driving Uber. <laughs> it's just, I mean, you could do it and, you, and it's going to be great. And I liked it, but it's I liked like Baritone. you know, I know, and you were fantastic. It was mostly at for it. myself. You crushed it. You were you were excellent at it, but. Golly, did we miss you on lead? So thanks. Really glad you're back on lead. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad to be with a group. Um, the, we we really trust each other. The other week we just had a uh, meeting about just what are we doing next? You know, are we how are we treating each other? How's everything going? Are we still on track to do the things we want to do? Are we all on the same page? Because it's a lot of work, mm-hmm. right? Like, is this what we want to keep doing? How do we want to keep doing it so that we can all keep doing it the right way? Right. So, right. See, their quartet talked about how they treat each other. Just that, I thought that might be helpful to you. We do. Too. Yeah, we, we do. No, they, they talk, talk very, about very it. They talk about it right in front of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we, we made it through COVID. So. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We definitely mm-hmm. know how to treat you each all looked other. at me like you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> we definitely, like, we definitely oh, as the young say. We are so kind to each other. We keep it real in this quartet. You keep it very, very honest. It helps. It helps with transparency. We're definitely not disingenuous with each other. I mean, that's that's one of the most endearing things about you guys is we know what we're going to get. I mean, you know, what, I wouldn't say all that. I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> you, you, I think yeah. what it is. you know, we're crazy. <laughs> not to mention, you guys are literally the longest reigning champions of all time. So. And as Tony DeRosa said in, uh, in what was the movie? Um, American Harmony. <laughs> That and a dollar fifty still won't get you a bus pass. That's exactly. So. That's <laughs> right. It's a gallon of gas. Yeah, a gallon. Of gas. Are you sure? Is that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm pretty sure it's a gallon of gas. Up, I grew up riding the bus, so don't <laughs> don't judge me. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> My grandfather drove public buses, and you're like, oh, I'm driving the car. What if we didn't have a car? What if I was on the bus? Then drive the bus. <laughs> I was going to drive the bus? I mean, ride the bus. You can ride the bus. Oh, okay. You can. I'm this is, bus ticket. Vehicle. Um, this is why you. First Take oh. has those meetings. Yes, yes. It's <laughs> moments like this. He's an only child, okay? Then we're going to move on from this. <laughs> These are our meetings. So. Yes. Speaking That's of being an only child, good. I want to hear about the signature guys outside of barbershop. I want to hear, what is your life like? What do you do? What's your family like? Like, What is, uh, what is life like for you outside of the barbershop world? Who wants to start? We'll start right here. We'll start with Paul. We'll go down the down the line this way. <laughs> That's what you get for sitting on the end. So. Uh, <laughs> kids, lots of family. That's it. That <clears throat> consumes my time. Yeah. Got, uh, eight-year-old son, Aiden. Five-year-old daughter, Leah. 
my beautiful wife Jennifer. That consumes my time. Yeah, that's uh, that's what defines me. So that's what I spend my time doing. Love it. Everything Love else it. is irrelevant, not important. Just that. So it's true. And what do you do? Deep. What do you do for a living? I'm a corporate paralegal. I work for a medical company. We have oh, like nice. uh, PCP offices throughout the country, and we serve Medicare Advantage patients. So mostly underserved communities. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, great. So nothing musical, man. Uh, well, just <laughs> mostly just <laughs> just singing with these guys. Yes. At, at one time, I used to do a lot of studio session work. I was gonna say when I got out of college, you know, <clears throat> it was like chasing the dream. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Gonna be something. Music, but speaking of which, we got some clips of that. Of those recordings we're going to show right now. If you what? Want. I'm just kidding. Yes. Yes. I was like, hey, I was what? dying so, for it. I know. Wouldn't that have been awesome if I could I just pull that out? Oh, that would have been great. Um, no, they already think I orchestrated this whole thing. Please don't feel yeah. that fire. Let's move on. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did that for a while. But after I met my wife, I just got more serious about having a more traditional. Yeah. You know, being a musician is a hard life. It's tough, bro. With a family and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I had some opportunities. So I did some cool things. Yeah. Um, I was close, but. Sure. You know, it's not. it doesn't happen for everybody, so. No, for sure. But I get to be in signature, so. I was I'm just saying, not everybody gets to be uh, barbershop quartet champions of the world. So I'll take either. it. So, hey. I'll take it. That's, that's something, right? Absolutely. I'll take it. <laughs> that and $1.50 won't get you a, a, bus, a pass. bus pass. A bus pass. <laughs> 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 This hurts me deeply. <laughs> By the way, your floor is quite clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clean floors are important. Yeah. Apparently, oh, no. apparently, clean floors are a thing. Yeah. Does that mean the singing is going to be good? Correct. Is that the- <laughs> Correct. Dan used to be Paul Bunyan, and uh, he left Blue in the <laughs> in the forests of Minnesota. Yeah. No, in the forest at KJ's house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The haunted, the haunted fog-filled oh, forest. No, yeah. When he decided he didn't want to be a Viking anymore, he decided right. to be a barbershopper. So it's a, <laughs> but it's the most glorious beard in barbershop, I have to say. So. That's right. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. So um, right now I'm just pretty much working and just trying to figure out life and enjoy yeah. it again. So after winning, it's been an interesting path and trying to get that part of life away because that was very consuming. and It was an awesome, awesome mm-hmm. journey, but it took it took a lot of time. So so trying to figure out what life is and again outside of barbershop and enjoy my job and I work for Ryan Homes right now and it's a new nice. venture. I just moved into warranty. So I was a project manager for a while and now I'm in warranty. Nice. It's, it's been a it's been a pretty fun ride so far. So but it's been that's awesome. It's been great. But yeah, it's pretty yeah, much people, it's people right don't uh unless you do it, unless you make that that journey, it's people don't quite understand just it's, how much goes into getting when, the gold. When, when you get done it's just like <sighs> now, now what? What do I do? Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Well, there's just so, so much work that goes into right. climbing those ranks right. and, and singing at that level and being consistent and doing the shows and getting the stage time and mm-hmm. the coaching and arrangements. and It's, it's a lot. I think, I think it's, it's so it's, worth it. Oh, yeah. It's all of that, but also for us, I mean, after we won, COVID hit, and mm-hmm. we had to really take inventory of what was important. We had to have for some sure. real conversations with each other on, you know, what are we doing, what's making sense, what's not making sense, have better boundaries. Daniel was chasing his dream to, to sing at Disney. We had to be supportive of that, which means we were going to be separated and, and we had been accustomed to being together and all that stuff. And, you know, there's been a lot of transitions, but we've I think we've handled it with as much grace with for each other as possible. And yeah. that's that's helped us kind of along the way. It hasn't been easy. You know, it did feel like when COVID hit, it felt like everything shut down. It felt like yeah. everything we had planned or everything was going to happen just kind of went away. You know? So... Yeah, I know that's that's how it felt for me. I don't want to speak for everybody else, but no, for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of us felt like that, man. Yeah. And you guys had just won, so you know, the tough part I I can imagine is like going into your champ year, and you got all this momentum and you're you know riding high, and it's what seven months later, eight months later, everything just goes Nothing. screech. Yep. You know, we got one. We got one good trip. We got to, the three of us. Unfortunately, without Paul, got to go to Australia. In oh, September. that's right. So oh, that was yeah. pretty amazing. 2019, um, right after we yeah. went here. Mm-hmm. So nice. That was our international trip so far, but looks like we got a few things in the in the works coming up. So good. That's awesome, man. Cool. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 
All right, what about you, bro? So <laughs> I work for the same company that Dan does. I, I owned my own construction company for about almost a decade. Uh, the three of us worked together when we were singing together, which was yeah great and also could be very stressful, especially since we were traveling so much at that time. Um, I took a job with Ryan Holmes. I referred Dan. He got a job right after. This is when Dan, Daniel had just gotten the job at Disney. So the timing just kind of felt like it was a shift and everything fell into place the way it was supposed to. Mm, I don't know nice. if that would felt like you, but for me, I was like at peace when that happened, those mm. shifts. And I've been with Ryan Holmes since 2019. It's a great, great job. Um, a lot of autonomy that they give us, which give us opportunities to go on these on these trips and still sing and Man, that's go nice. to these schools and do these things, you know. Um, supporting my wife, my beautiful wife, Gisela, Dr. Perjone, sorry. Ooh. Um, she, opened oh, up yeah. her, she opened up her practice. So that was one of the things I would take to, close down my company, take the job so that she can chase her dream instead of consulting, doing all the stuff she was doing. So open up her practice and we've been doing that and it's been great. You know, man, so we're just awesome, man. moving back to Miami, which I'm kind of bittersweet about because mm -hmm. we ha I haven't been there since I was sick back then. And mm. uh, it's been, it's kind of hard to go back to there i'm not really know if it's going to fit the new me and that whole thing mm. after winning and you know there's a lot of change and progression that's gone throughout this journey that we've had you know yeah a lot of insight you gain as artists going to different places seeing how people live and experiencing different things so i'm, I'm just not sure how that's going to fit but you are know. you going back to the same same area yeah 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 mm -hmm. so wow it brings up a lot it's a mixed bag for sure but closer oh, to family and all that stuff that's closer good. to my brother a little further from Dan, because right now we literally live in the same complex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but but nice. you know, it works. It works. It'll work. Yeah. So, wow. That's it. Now, when you guys were, before we get to, to Daniel, when you guys were kind of in the in the thick of it and like really grinding and really pushing toward, you know, winning the gold, you guys all lived close to each pretty other. Pretty close, yeah. Right? Pretty close. So you guys, were you guys Separate. able to rehearse pretty consistently? Which I feel like is a rarity. Except for Daniel. Daniel, Daniel wasn't in there. As yeah, but for the first, for the first, what two months? Two months. Three, so. I, I think we rehearsed for three months without you, actually. Yeah, oh, really? Three months. Mm -hmm. three months. When, well, but we, you always had the ability to rehearse, even with Matt. Well, in with class and, with mm -hmm. Matt, Matt was two hours away, so we would. Okay. There was a time, especially during eighteen, making that run where we were driving either to Matt's or or he was driving down to us twice a week. And oh, we were wow. doing that commitment. And then when we started singing with Paul, the That's commute great. got shorter. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, between Paul and Daniel, it's an hour and a half. And yeah. then at that point, Daniel was moving to Orlando. So we rehearsed. We literally trioed for three months or two and a half months, which oh, is wow. we knew which is what we needed because well, we sure. were switching parts. I had never sung baritone. It was like a whole thing. Yeah. We're like, we need to. Well, we got together tight. in what, August, late August, September. September. Right after Labor Day. They th <laughs> They think they, they always call this Daniel and the Pips. So we're like, the Pips yeah. need to be tight for Daniel, okay? So, <laughs> well, he was in candlelight. So, yeah, he oh, candlelight, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we rehearsed yeah. the trio, but uh, yeah, we did yeah. get together a ton. Twice a week. Well, it, it, I think it just highlights just how unimportant the lead part is. Yeah. You I know, agree. how much progress you can really make without. Debbie and I just what? gave each other a look. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on. 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 Hold Excuse me. <laughs> nah, Daniel, what's what's uh, what's life like for you, brother? So I work for Disney. Uh, yes. Bob Eisner. For Bob Eisner. For Bob Eisner. Bob Eisner. Bob Eisner. Bob Eisner. <laughs> I hate you all. You work for Dwight Howard. <laughs> Dwight Howard. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, um, I I started working for Disney about a year and a half ago. Um, my my plans after we won with the quartet was to uh, move up to Orlando anyway, but uh, COVID stopped that from happening. So mm. um, ended up staying in my hometown, West Palm Beach, for about a year and a half. Mm. Found a job and I uh, got a call uh, with a full-time position that opened up. So With voices? With voices. Man. Lately. So um, I, awesome. I ended up moving up to Orlando. That was scary. It's my, I've, I've been away from home a few times, but this was um, something that I've been wanting to do trying to pursue being a professional musician. Yeah. Um, so this was this was definitely a, a life change for me. I happened to go up here. But, you know, with almost being up here for two years, or being there for two years now, um, I, I'm starting to get my bearings on life and start a new life. So um, mm. it's it's a great opportunity. It's wonderful to still get to see my guys and yeah. still, still sing and uh, just act 
act a fool like we normally do. <laughs> um, you, you, you're all still you with You work for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> y Pocahontas. Yeah. You work for Oswald the Rabbit. <laughs> Oswald the Rabbit. Mm -hmm. No, they don't own that anymore, do they? Yeah, they, they do. Oh. Yeah, they, they Can we that say Disney. that? Trademark, trademark. That's no. right. Trademark, yeah. trademark. IP, IP, IP. I IP. Mute all that stuff yeah. out. No. <laughs> are you guys, you guys are all Steam still Willy within... Steamboat Willie that we can use now. Three hours. You're still within three hours of each other, right? Nice. Daniel, I'm curious. So that's, you know, that's a dream job for a lot of people, man. Yeah, you man. know, and you're one of the most talented vocalists I've ever heard and uh, one of the most entertaining performers. So, you know, well, well deserved for sure. I want to know what is it like finally getting to achieve a dream like that, singing full time for Disney World in such a prestigious group like the Voices of Liberty and, and dreaming about that and watching them and, and seeing them you know, for so many years and then all of a sudden being able to be a part of the magic that happens behind the scenes, you know, what is that transition like for you? Uh, it's very humbling mm -hmm. uh, as a musician. It's a very humbling thing. I think we all, uh, especially as singers, we all uh, would love a job, a dream job like this, but there's a lot of responsibility that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. And um, even going into it, not knowing what I was really getting into, I just know that I had to go in and be on the other side of a person that I'm not now. Well, I was mm. then. I'm a different person now. Uh, with the amount of music I had to learn um, and just learning my way around, um, you know, this this new industry to be a part of. But um, it's definitely made me a, a better musician. Mm. Um, it's definitely um, made me grow up a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, you know, in the life <coughs> that I'm in now. So I'm very grateful for it. Uh, the person that I replaced uh, was a big big pair of shoes I had to fill mm. uh, but I also had to come in and, and do my thing there was nothing given to me so um, very grateful to be in the room with some really talented people um, I even got to um, sing with a good friend this year for mm. Christmas um, and it was uh, just a, a blessing and a, and a joy just seeing you uh, this year oh, so, thank you yeah, it was, <coughs> thank I heard you, it was Daddy. pretty awesome yes <coughs> I heard it was pretty pretty awesome yeah yeah, and it's such a, I mean, anybody who's seen The Voices of Liberty, it's a magical experience. I mean, you get, there's lots of performance acts and stuff at Disney World, and there's lots of groups that you get to yeah. see live, but Voices of Liberty, there's a, I mean, one, it's completely a cappella in a fully acoustic room, and you basically get to sit crisscross applesauce <laughs> watching, you know, yeah. these unbelievable musicians just, you know, blow your minds right in front of you. So that is such a... You know, I can't think of anybody is, better, man. Is that's, it PC for me to say that's the most Caucasian thing I've ever heard? I mean, <laughs> listen, no, you can Chris say Cross that applesauce. Yeah. <laughs> that definitely is uh, very Caucasian of you. And I also now want applesauce. I'm just going to say, I love applesauce. Manzanita, I used to call it when I was a kid. <laughs> you ever said you ever said crisscross applesauce? Never. We no? did. I was an yeah, elementary. I, I was an uh, elementary school teacher in music for. Yeah. For okay. six years, and you used it there. I'm also yeah. from North this week. So. Okay, all, yeah, all, all the white guys are like, oh, yeah, Chris yeah, Cross has sauce. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, no, that's the thing. What did you call it when you. I, I don't know, but my wife does sit like that off. It's not appropriate to say It's not appropriate now. But that's what it was. That's what it was in Miami. You know, they were not PC down there. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know what you're doing, little kid? No, yeah, it was not good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's you're gonna go. Crisscross apple, quack quack. There's gonna be all kinds of. I'm gonna have a lot of little, a lot of muting, muting <laughs> happening. Double for you. You know, use all that. What? That's right. I'm giving them sounds to mute. The... I'm just gonna sample those sounds so I can use those oh for the gosh. mute. Oh my gosh, you really should. Sleep. Giggity whoop. <laughs> oh ding 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 giggity whoop. All right, now on to someone uh, else, someone <laughs> who uh, I have looked up to and loved and admired for many, many, many years. And, He's uh, looking at me. Is he talking about? No, me? I'm getting ready to bring in is. Tony. I just yeah. wanted to kind of. <laughs> I'm just worried. Mr. Tony, Tony. Mr. Capo. Tony Cross, the lead of the Capo. Yes, that's right. The Capo. No, <laughs> lead of no. Iguanas in flight. De uh, Debbie Cleveland is a name that is known, you know, through all barbershop organizations for for many many years for for all the all the right reasons. You are a two time champ, two time queen. 
and uh, you host the BHS webcast. It's pretty odd. Awesome. It's odd being on this side of the of the yeah. interview. Yeah. And yeah. I, feel, right? I feel kind of put on the spot. You're the one who's usually interviewing me. Yeah. And and uh, and so now I'm actually getting to, oh, you know. But there was crazy. a time where we hosted the webcast together. Oh yeah, that we did was, the youth festival or right. whatever it was called. Then it's been yeah. through many many. Well, no, different no, no. Names. We also Oops. hosted. We also hosted the. Uh, uh, I think it was in 2014. We hosted the the normal webcast together too. Of course we did. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't remember. I totally remember that. <laughs> yeah, you know, right there. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the time? Uh, now I'm now I'm now I'm second guessing my uh, memory because I have a terrible memory. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I made oh, that amazing. up. Amazing. But either way, no. Uh, Debbie Cleveland now singing in Dynasty. Yeah. Which is a killer name, by the way. Oh, thank you. That was a great quartet Mike Slamka came up with that name. We were looking for a name about family and generations. And um, the only thing is if you say it too slowly or separate it, it's die nasty. That's the only bad thing (laughs) (laughs) about about Dynasty. Die um, nasty. We we were... (laughs) (laughs) You got him. That's good. That's good. But uh, anyway... I shouldn't have pointed that out about No, now that's all I'm going to hear. That's That's all all I'm going to hear. That's all you're going to hear. And that's how I will refer to you guys. We'll just start a chant. Forthwith. We'll start a chant in September. Next to the stage, die nasty. (laughs) Nasty. 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 Oh, no. No, What have I done? But yes, it's a thrill to sing with my daughter. Oh, my gosh. She's just obviously my favorite. One of my favorite persons she's, in the whole world. I can't say my favorite because then Brett will be upset. But she's <clears throat> she is um, great to sing with and just be with. And she moved to Ohio because she met a wonderful oh, yeah. man from Ohio. So she she you got know, married. Yeah, and she moved far I'm away. So, so this so gives us a, an extra reason to be to get together and, and get to do this together. It's fantastic and just getting to know Michaela and Sarah better. And I mean. So amazing singers and people incredible. it's They're just incredible. been a dream come true i really just feel like it's a charmed thing that i i don't know well, I, don't, I don't deserve it but i'm just so thrilled with it oh well so are we i mean i remember when you guys first announced it because i've been i've been hinting for years i'm like you guys you need you two need to be in a quartet together and, and i like, kept telling her just sing with some young fun people for a while you know <laughs> you don't want to sing with your mom no but but anyway. you guys are like besties though you guys are yeah. you guys are a very close mom daughter duo and it's, yeah it's really special and that's kind of like you know obviously you're you're you guys were second last year at international, which, you know, when you, you assume things, you can assume that you guys are on the way to winning oh, a championship. There's n- no, you know, there's I, no assuming I know you in can't. There's I get no it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but if one were to assume, assume, yeah, don't assume. <laughs> I mean, no we, would, we would like to move made. up a spot. I can't lie. I mean, that would be nice, right? You, you don't want to go back to contest. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Drew, Drew goes up there and sings and a happens. fifty-five minute ballad, and they give him a thousand. One last time. Oh no, that's Done. the other. That's the other year. That's the first Done. silver. Why well, you got to do that? Yeah, that was Tony. Tony oh, D. Oh man, isn't that said, annoying when right quartets sing smiling, long ballads? It's crazy. No, this is Tony DeRosa. <laughs> Come on, one last time, guys. And then he sang "Smile" and it was over. Oh, it was really good. that's true, man. Yeah. He pulled that. He pulled the heartstring mm-hmm. there, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're at KJ Ha. Huh? That's true, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, All hey. we can do is sit there, crisscross applesauce. Hey. <laughs> crisscross, crisscross, crisscross applesauce. I don't know. I told you we didn't say that. <laughs> hey, listen, lunch break, lunch break. We kind of did the same thing, man. Who's that? Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Wow, exactly. bro. I looked at him because I, mean, I felt like you, you did listen, that on purpose. In the tw- in the twenty, we did. We said our last song break. was like. Uh, Good. Part of your world, and we were saying goodbye. We we're like, This is it. Last time we had no idea we were gonna make 10, so I you know, know. Right. that was amazing. That, that was amazing. That was, yeah, that was this amazing. is awkward, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is exactly Which is, nothing planned. I mean, so. perfect. No. <laughs> it's crazy, it was amazing. But that all that being said, oh, yes, what assuming, <laughs> I mean, what is it like for you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I think not many assuming. people get to go on this journey. He tried to help them walk it back. Toward, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you gave him the open space. You stopped. <laughs> Not many people get to go on the journey of heading toward a championship, singing in a quartet with their child. 
Mm-hmm. You know? oh. I mean, I look at I look at Tony DeRosa doing that's that true. with his son that's right cool. now, and that's so awesome to it watch. Cool. And then all of us who have kids, we just imagine what that could be like. You know, getting to experience something like singing in a in a high level professional quartet, getting ready. You know, trying to to win the gold or win the crown someday. And you're doing that, and you're getting to do that with your daughter. It's so and it's exciting. Your, and this is your. This could be your third. Oh, that's I mean, I don't want to say it out loud. I get it. I get it. it no. I'm just saying. Like, what's that? What's that experience like? It's um, it's incredible and fun, and I'm just savoring every second because I know how fast the time goes by, and no matter what happens placement wise, it's easy to say that kind of after sure. after you've gotten to do it and you've been blessed to do it. Then the next time is like, okay, I just want to take the time enjoy it and and um you know so who knows there are so many talented quartets out there i'm a yeah, fan of, of so many of these great quartets that are there new and forming every day you know you never oh, yeah. know who's gonna pop up and and come up but we're just happy to be in the mix of that and as you were talking about singing with jenny you know watching her in in windsor all those years yeah. oh my goodness but i would sit in the Incredible yes quartet. Yeah, i would sit in the though. audience and and just be so nervous and take every breath with them and so now i just worry about myself so that's kind of fun that i get to enjoy yeah. her doing it but i'm not like so, yeah so stressed it's <laughs> it's really fun Man, that's awesome. But yeah. What a special thing. I like how being I like how being on the international stage as a competitor is less stressful for her. Seriously. Let's all she's like, let's I used to worry. The goat, like there's the reason why right there. Now like, I can just be calm and can chill for the gold. To just perform in front of everybody. <laughs> now I can just <laughs> perfect. Oh, take a take a back seat and just breathe and No, listen, yeah. it was so frightening this this <laughs> mm-hmm. year. It really was. After, I mean, the last time I was on international stage was 19 years ago with the bus. Oh, That's when the bus went. Wow. So 19 years That's in between crazy. international performances, I'm thinking, am I going to remember what this feels like out there? Is it, is it in a good way? Am I going to like... It was like riding a bike, is wasn't it? It, gonna, it? it, 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 it felt okay. It sounded like it. It sounded like it. It looked like it. Thank you. Yeah. It looked like 19 minutes is what it had been. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I, the, the, the chops still came through for some reason. Right. I, no. I don't know why. But, no, you, but you, never didn't, you never really stopped. Um, right, like you were, you were singing. I was singing. The yeah. buzz retired at the end of 2018, mm-hmm. so I hadn't been really regularly singing. And you know, teaching just rags your oh, voice man. out so badly. So when I retired from teaching a year and a half ago, I got this vocal break, like all mm-hmm. of a sudden. And then I started, you know, singing again and, and doing some other things. And and yeah, so <clears throat> that felt really good. Good. But, yeah. Well, we're we're all very glad you're back. You're yes. sweet. Thank very, you. very glad you're back. It's fun. Yeah. Awesome. Appreciate a- it. And Hire us for your next chapter show. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bring them on. Bring them on. Or, or the next Nasty. podcast. We do so. eight Nasty. part. We do Nasty. eight part with Signature, Dynasty. but they don't know it yet. Dynasty. <laughs> Dynasty. 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 That's it. That's the next track. Chance. Imagine that. Sweet Adeline convention all of a sudden. It's like, you know, when the audience goes, Lemon, squeezy, lemon. Uh Uh And they go, Die. Nasty. Oh, I I should have picked Midtown. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I didn't pick Midtown. (laughs) Or Sig. Nature. See. Nature. Nature. Be careful. Nature. Be careful. Uh, listen. Listen. <laughs> what I was thinking was more traumatic. Like, you're going to go there to destroy everybody or eat them. So I feel like the jaws. Eat them? Nasty. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> nasty. 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 The, the content oh, they create. H2O. Oh. Goodness. All right, Tony, tell us about you, brother. <laughs> outside, um, of, outside of barbershop. Yeah, I have um, a beautiful wife who actually I get the opportunity to sing with. She is an incredible... Oh, we're back in barbershop. Okay. Incredible singer. <laughs> um, it's honestly one of, uh, it's one of my favorite things we do together. Uh, we have... We have three kids. Um, we have uh, James, who's two and a half. We have Christopher, who's six, and Ruth, who just turned nine this past week. Um, and it's uh, it's a like Paul. It's really my number one priority. You know, we've um, from a professional perspective, I I stopped teaching in public schools uh, back in 2017 oh. to start to start um, teaching uh, voice and uh, coaching ensembles both scholastic ensembles and hobbyist adults barbershop mostly and 
yeah. So That's I'm awesome. sort of doing the the barbershop thing. Um, running a studio vocal studio right now that's relatively small Mm -hmm. and mostly the people who have been doing it with me for a few years um, because of family Uh, flexibility and time has required that we just have somebody at the ready at different times of the day my wife works at our local elementary school um, and so she's our kids music teacher Um, (laughs) and it's just an unexpected blessing and an amazing joy uh, to be able to see that sort of work out. She should enjoy that while they're young because I was my kid's music teacher in high school. Oh, Oh, really? That was a a much different experience. It was a whole different experience. That's so funny. It's a funny connection, actually, that I won't won't talk forever because these guys are are the focus, but I I will say this this morning or yesterday, um, I was dropping my kids off at school and the principal, uh, Mr. Lacey, knocks on the knocks on my window, and I'm like, oh, because the principal <laughs> knocks on your window. It's like I got to talk to you about something, your kid something. in like the yeah. drop on dropout line, which is like you got to move. And oh, I geez. rolled down my window. I'm like, what's up, Mr. Lacey? He goes, the kid's officially a Dapper Dan. Oh, <laughs> his kid, his son, oh. just became a Dapper Dan in Disneyland over on the West Coast like last week wow so yeah totally awesome anyway so he was (laughs) so he was like (laughs) he told me that he didn't tell my wife (laughs) <laughs> you just don't, oh, he's like he's the barber shopper. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Wow. So anyway, it's pretty cool. It's a really cool community. A uh, great place. So. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm on Leesburg, Virginia, we had to move out because of the number of kids. We just had to keep moving a, further northwest of DC to keep oh. affordability realistic. So now I'm flying out of Dulles. Oh, <laughs> oh, <dang>. oh. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> That's not fun. Is what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say you got like this Ted Lasso kind of thing going on. Ted Lasso vibe with the Oh, sweater. thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Just the like just with the a beard, compliment, but, man. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think so, Tony kind of has a Ted Lasso vibe about his right. whole, his saying. whole yeah. being. Yeah. 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 About that. Not just the clothes. Can you drop some like everything he says? Yeah. yeah. Believe. Yeah. Oh, man. Golly. Great quote. You know, I will do that. <laughs> I wasn't I feel. going to. Every time, every time Tony talks, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't going to believe until he said it. How do you say it like, like that, unicorns Tony? And, unicorns and, and 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 rainbows. That's right. And then Paul talks, and it's just like you know, pure chaos and catastrophic. Like, you know, just a world ending. Play Scorch tectonics. You know, I like to take more of a realism concave. approach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, murder, death, kill is his realism. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a well, PG show. Talk oh, me about. Yeah, PG 13 is fine. Okay. okay. You know, yeah. ready to keep going up. Um, I got to witness something really cool at the Mid Atlantic District this last uh, this oh, last cool. fall when Midtown got to go to, to MAD after, after we won and uh, just watch the contest, and I got to see you compete. In uh, better together. Yeah, I, mm. I'm still. At, I'm trying to sing baritone, y'all. I mean, let's get going. The Don't Heather on lead. Nuts. You're you're just you're cranking. Yeah. So for the, for those who don't know, I'm singing with uh, Heather Havens and uh, Andrew, who is the bass of First Take and was the bass of DeCapo. Andrew and I sang together in college. Um, nice. He went to to school with me, um, and uh, then it, we we got together in DeCapo. Um, we sang barbershop in college a bit, but it was mostly um, to because we were interested in it, sang tags and stuff. And uh, he married Heather, and it was just this really amazing friendship that we had. And we would sing together tags or whatever just during DeCapo rehearsal weekends. Nice. We'd sing, and we'd be like, we should make this a thing. Like, this should be a thing. <laughs> and then we just started learning some songs, and then we sang them and then people yeah. started wanting to hear more songs so we learned more songs and so it's that's great. sort of how Better Together it's came great. together. Why would he be so excited about getting demoted to baritone though? <laughs> because Heather's the lead. <laughs> it's oh, pretty straightforward. She's great. Yeah, she had no choice. Yeah, yeah, that's when, right. Christian is, when Christian and Heather sing in lead it's really an like easy that, call. Huh? <laughs> you like that one Paul, huh? <laughs> you said demoted to baritone he smiled. Hey, really listen. <laughs> no Debbie, offense. Debbie Cleveland can rack up that my part any day. Huh? <laughs> experience with demotion <laughs> yeah apparently a little bit i'm dumb dumb stupid dumb dumb i can't get anything right apparently that is the stereotype for baritones right apparently i mean i guess so no <laughs> no it's not oh my yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah. man no but it was it was a joy and uh, i'll say really quick also M- midtown man showing up 
to stuff like you like as the district champs who just uh, were mid-atlantic district champs and international champions coming back to be at the mid-atlantic district convention was really really cool so um, being fully present there at midwinter this past uh month and um mid-atlantic district contest was a really cool move i really appreciated that thanks as a lifelong mad guy it was really cool Thanks, man. Our champs before that were the 1974 champs, the Regents, and the 2011 champs, old school. Old school. And so we hadn't really had a we hadn't really had a gold medal quartet in their champ year at the convention as like yeah. the people we could celebrate and say, "Thanks, great job representing us." So, thanks, man. Really I mean, great. we we wanted to make sure that we came back because because we got so much support from Mad mm-hmm. and from you know the, the district and everybody in it. It just felt like. You know, we wanted to make sure that we got to celebrate this, you know, moment. With, Plus, they still with have a home. lot of merch to sell. That's so right. We had to sell <laughs> merch, so yeah, we were looking for every opportunity we could just, just to get that, that table out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I should have bought so much. <laughs> Yeah, what shirt are you? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, dang. Okay, well. Jersey, come to the Jersey Harmony Explosion <laughs> <Yeah>. tomorrow. <laughs> Man. So, uh, Signature Guys, talk to me about what life is like for the quartet now. Obviously, you got when you guys won, you know, the ramp up to winning. And then after you won, you guys kind of realigned your priorities, right? Families kind of kicked in, jobs, dreams, pursuing. and uh, And now... You're here at the Harmony Camp, you know, in New Jersey, singing for kids all day, getting ready to entertain them all day tomorrow. Um, you know, what is what does the future look like for Signature as a quartet? Musically, personally, you know, what are some things that you guys see on the horizon? Well, immediate stuff, like we're going to New Zealand, I think, <clears throat> at the end of this year, that's going to be a life-changing trip. I think that, oh, yeah. at least for me, Culturally, the way I grew up is very collectivistic, and I feel like that is a culture. Culturally, it's it's going to be a great fit. You know, we yeah. connected with them at International. It was just a really good time. So the fact that we're going to go there and be able to take our wives and just enjoy that together, that's going to be a good time, I think. Um, yeah, as far as the future is concerned, it's, it's really, you know, whenever we have a platform <laughs> to sing on, an opportunity to connect with people, uh, an opportunity to make music, we'll, Signature will be there. We'll show <laughs> up, you know, at... The last few years, what I can say has been great is all of the youth outreach stuff that we've been doing with the AIC. I'm excited for Midtown to be a part of that. Hmm. Um, yeah. It's it's going to be, you know, that's that's where that's where it's at. You know, the fact that we went to these three schools today, the fact that I saw representation, I saw a couple little Wills there, a little a couple little Daniels, hmm. a couple Pauls. You know, it just it it makes. There's a lot of you, Dan. Um, there. Were they sitting crisscross uh, applesauce? There was a, crisscross applesauce. Applesauce. There was a lot of little bearded white kids sitting yeah. crisscross applesauce. Yeah. Just right there. That, that, it's just. Deep you want to yeah. <laughs> Johnny Five. Thank you. No Five? No. Johnny Five, disassemble. Thank you. I think uh, uh, COVID changes everybody's perspective now. Sure. Yeah, sure does. The man. way you sure might did. have seen things or how you have a perspective moving forward. So for us, it's more just about maintaining. There isn't a reason why we don't stay together and continue to sing and make music, we'll, yeah. you know. And we we have some some goals and some things we'd like to do. But I mean, I remember Gene um, talking about it's not just winning, but it's about legacy, right? When you think about Absolutely. legacy, local spectrum, right? Absolutely. The Sun Tones. Yep. Bluegrass Student Union. So. The goal is to just try to maintain the buzz, the buzz for the sure. Buzz. The buzz. Yes, but but legacy. I mean, that's and I don't know that we can define that in specific terms currently. But sure. the hope is that. Well, I think the when, beautiful thing is you guys don't define that. It's the rest of the society and the community of singers that define that for us. Well, right. It's terrifying to say. Isn't it, though? It really is. It's very vulnerable. Yeah. It's a, it is a vulnerable thing. Correct. And I think, I think ultimately what we've decided is that, you know, we, as long as we're aligned and we decide to take the next right step, everything will fall into place. So it's not really about being worried about what's going to happen 20 years from now. We've taken that stress off the plate. Mm -hmm. We're just enjoying being together, enjoying having an opportunity to to sing, you know, uh, Daniel being in Orlando, it's, it's tough to not get together, but every time we get together, it's just a reminder of how much we enjoy making music together. Right. And I think Mm -hmm. that 
ultimately, when you talk about signature and our legacy in the future, you'll you might say that you know we connected to them as real human beings because we try to be, you know, yeah, we were unapologetic, unapologetically ourselves, yeah. right? Well, and, and that's, that's what I think people. That I think that's what people say now, and I think that is what people will say in twenty years from now, is that you know there was no so. smokescreen, there was no you know putting up a front. You guys were exactly who you are on stage, who you are off stage, and I've yes, had the man. pleasure to be, you know consider you guys friends for a while and and be able to spend some time outside of the you know the the back the green room with you all and mm -hmm. and you know just really experience you guys as people and and uh you know you are as genuine and authentic as they come and i think that's what's gonna you know that and your incredible your vocals <laughs> you blow my brain every single time i see you perform it's there's never a time where i'm like oh wow signature was pretty good i'm always like what the frick is happening so musically there's you know you're going to be carried for a long time but i think uh thanks i think who you are as people Appreciate is going to be you know what really really sends your legacy into uh the later years so uh, i think that's that's definitely something that's pretty secure <laughs> oh, and, I, so, and if i and if i may say with respect to our lead singer i mean the fact is we we also have a responsibility to tell the story of the music we sing and represent the way Absolutely. that we show up you mm -hmm. know and we do that a lot through the lens of Daniel. So it's really about making sure that he continues to feel comfortable with the music we're singing. And, For sure. And as he continues to evolve as as our lead singer and the things that he wants to approach, I'm sure there'll be other things that we'll, we can try. You know, and well, it's it's been it's been a big you know journey to say is signature barbershop is it not? And we just kind of we're just kind of leaning into what feels right for us. You know, and well, everything people else said that of, about. Lots of quartets, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, who now you look back and you're like, they're the greatest. They're, they're the, some of the greatest of all times. You know? Yeah. The only difference yeah. is they did it very outwardly with us. You know, mm -hmm. and it almost felt sometimes intentional. It felt like they were crossing a boundary that you know shouldn't have been something that we were doing, but mm -hmm. it happened, and we had to just kind of be comfortable with who we are and just kind of go out there and sing. Yeah, the music that we wanted, and it wasn't always about a message, but it was always about just representing being the best artist that we could be as a quartet. Well, sure. And singing the music that was true to you guys, right? Not not mm -hmm. adapting to to mm -hmm. check some box on the yeah. on a score sheet, and yeah. and I think you guys were rewarded for that, both from an audience standpoint and you know from your legacy. I mean, nobody can sing the the kind of music you sing. <laughs> nobody can do it. We could try, <laughs> but we're gonna sound like uh, crisscross applesauce singing. <laughs> we're gonna sound like you know trying to trying to sing. <laughs> <laughs> signature arrangements and uh, I think that's one of the things that I love most about you guys is that not only are you singing music that is just authentic and 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 true to you guys but it is there's no one else like it there's no one else I can sing like you Daniel no one that's else can sing music like you yeah you know? I, th I and think you could say that about all champ quartets right there's something special that makes a quartet for sure sure a champ quartet or or quartets that are coming up the ranks like first take but there's I, something I, special about what you do I'd be, special I'd be about biased, what we do. though. What? We're lucky. Daniel is, is, is special. one of, oh, no, yeah, yeah. Daniel's yeah, one yeah. of one. Mm -hmm. And to be in a quartet with Daniel... I well, mean, you all are. I mean, I, I it really say, is. I, I it really is. I get it. I don't we'll hate it either when Paul Saka steps forward and takes some melody. I was, gonna say, I was that. just going to say. Mean, I totally agree. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel is unique. He represents change right. and something different. And yeah. not only is it different... It's done exceptionally well. Yeah. It's great. You know? Yeah. 100% agree. I'm proud to stand next to you and sing. Agreed. You know? It's a, yeah. it's an honor. It is an honor to sing with you, Greg. Well, I don't stand well. I don't stand next to you anymore, yeah, because I was yeah, we demoted, you were demoted to baritone. To baritone. <laughs> demoted to baritone. <laughs> Be quiet. Man. Go over there and crisscross applesauce. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I gotta do. I gotta do all Go the dancing there, on stage. I gotta do everything. Yeah. And die nasty. And die nasty, baby. Die nasty. They, they're so you much stupid, nicer stupid, to dumb, each other dumb, when the camera's on than they were in the car. We got, we got, it, here. We got it all say, out. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what I do. I do well, they said PG thirteen, so we're trying to keep. it I pushed it up a little bit. I gave them the thirteen, so they can. You know. All right. So in in signature, I'm, a couple questions that were suggested to me. Okay, who is the quartet dad of signature? Interpret that however you want. That Administra is, very, administratively, that's a very question you can answer. you can think of that administratively. You can think of that relationally. That's, you can think of it. I'm not gonna say anybody's name. Just look at the party and whistle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I read that. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. It's it was a it was a dynamic change. I think in the original quartet, I was probably more of that role. Mm -hmm. Put your mic a little closer. Just little was it was probably in that role, and Daniel hated me for it. <laughs> and now Paul's in that role, and Daniel dumb, still dumb, hates me for it. Yeah. Dumb, <laughs> stupid dumb dumb. Yeah. Dumb, dumb, stupid I, dumb. I, I, uh, they call me can't get right. That's me. <laughs> That's you now? You can't, can't get, get right? right? Apparently. A little radio. A little radio. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so on a quartet weekend, oh. then, on a quartet show weekend, who is most likely to sleep in? That that's one. also changed. Actually, nobody that, really. Yeah, that's, that's actually changed. It could, be, it could be. So you don't have one of those. I don't know that we'll, I would point anybody out. Dan is I'm definitely, first, you know, always. up, you know, ate, had, had breakfast and sitting crisscross applesauce downstairs <laughs> in the lobby waiting for us. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. That's going to be the name of this episode. The image in my head is amazing. I'm sitting there yeah. 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 crisscross applesauce. Can you imagine? Apple yeah. <laughs> and he's pretty, levitating because he's meditating at the same time. In version one of Signature, I'm pretty sure Matt quit because Daniel and I were always late. Yeah, we were always late. Yeah, oh. he hated it. And Will used to sleep and wait for the other person to get up. And then we would wake up. And, and then was, sometimes we would fight with alarms. He'd put on alarms, I'd put on alarms. Put on alarms. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. and we'd be like, five Listen more, to five me. more. And we'd fight with was each other, a teenager? his alarm would go up, I went, Daniel, wake up, your alarm's he'd off. Have, he'd have about 10 alarms oh. that oh. would lead up. One of those. And they'd be oh, like, oh man. The next one would be, and nothing, and nothing. Be no reaction After whatsoever. After a while, he'd take the phone and just throw it across the room <laughs> and go back to sleep. Oh, my God. That's I, not the case. I know anymore. not what they speak of. But now you feel like everybody's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. we we've got all grown up. Because of work, yeah. it's, it's, it's a really rising. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a thing. All right, who's most likely to be missing a piece of your uniform at Dang. a show? Probably me. Probably me. Daniel's used to going to Disney and they do everything for him. They oh, bring him my <laughs> suit. My yeah. suit isn't. He's used to it. By like, Where is it? Yeah. Can he's, you go downstairs and like, get no. me another one? The other day he looked at Paul. He goes, makeup, please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were we were out today. Uh, you, you, Paul and Will don't know this, but we got in the car after the first school we went to. And I'm like, oh, my God, where's my phone? <laughs> so we like the other guys drove off we're sitting I'm like could you call me because I was like if I left my phone these oh, guys are no. going to kill me <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't want to let them know yeah. so, don't yeah. tell dad yeah, don't yeah. tell dad yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can't call dad can't call dad and can't call grandpa I meant we'll be <laughs> wow <laughs> how my grandpa he didn't say you were grandpa he well, didn't. Yeah, yeah, there didn't was a gesture there was a gesture he went like that <laughs> 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 No, I am. I'm. I'm all. About, I'm all about peace and love these days. But he brings everything bad out of me. So, and then, and then he gets this one going. And he gets that, and then he likes to sit in the corner. You know, just and he goes. He just giggles. No, no. no he, he just, just smiles and nods. No, he just says the one thing you don't want to hear in the moment. That's what he, he's no, got. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> everything blows up. I'm like, there we go. All right, we're good now. All right. And then he's mad at me. I don't understand. It. Oh man, it's fun. It's great. <laughs> I love quartet dynamics. I it's amazing. Oh, man. They're all so different. I love it. Who's the pickiest eater? Paul. Oh, Paul. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, probably Paul. true. Yeah. And then Will. Between Paul and Will. Yeah. Oh, really? For, For different yeah. reasons. Will's, Will's a little bit better than I am, though. I probably, I probably eat less things than Paul does, but Paul's probably a little bit more particular about Will's a little oh, bit more polite more. about, like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Like, if you You'll take send it to back. some restaurant and it You'll smells send it funny back. or dirty, yeah, no, Paul, I won't I won't go in the restaurant. <laughs> I wouldn't even go in the, the restaurant. The floor's not clean, man. The floor's not clean. The floor's not clean. If there's one thing I don't like... I can't clean. Did I say it like you know, that? You, 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 you know, in between shows, and I'm like, yeah, we'll have, a, we'll have some sandwiches and salami oh. out for you. And it's like, <laughs> I don't want... We brought in some cold cuts. Like, touch... Humid? No. Oh, no. my gosh. No. Humid I won't eat. I just, well, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. You show up in the room. You show up in the room. It's 1.15 a.m. Oh and God. you know they set that stuff That's up the, at oh, 7.45. Yeah. <laughs> it's been sitting there. The we don't know how place. many flies. Stale wet chips. You put your hands into your grab chips. The flies fall on it and you know what happens. Here's the crazy part. Everybody's fine with it. But if it had been lunch and then it was dinner time and it was still out, everybody would be grossed out. <laughs> but 1.15 a.m., they're all like, it's, yeah, that's right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. hello, beautiful. 
Hey. Hi, Hi there. Are you Hi. getting ready to go to bed? Sorry. Hey, can you come give me a kiss? Or give me a hug. Oh. Beautiful. Perfect. Oh. Go to bed, okay? I love you. Good night. Bye bye. <laughs> she That's didn't want to talk right to you, there, Daniel. She, she said what? no. She, she said she, she said no. I don't like want to talk to the chocolate man. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I missed, stay her, puff I missed her saying chocolate that. Marshmallow man. <laughs> I missed her saying that. I missed her saying that. I, I, I thought nothing. I was listening. I got nothing. It was implied. I, didn't hear. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how I interpreted that. I must have. <laughs> I got nothing. Man. He was right. like, goodbye. She's like, no. Oh, yeah. dude, she's cold. She's yeah. cold as ice. Yeah. She is cold not. She is not ice. my uh, my like affectionate. Like she is. She knows what she wants, and if she's not in the mood for it, you are chopped liver. That's Paul Saka. Yes, you just explain Paul Saka. No human salami for her. That's right. No human Good salami. Yeah, back to the afterglow food. I just want to say, salami. Is that what I we said? would all still be honored to do your shows, and we would. We're all sitting here we complaining. Would to be fair, I, 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 I love the salami. I'd love to do the show. I just don't want to have candy bags. They're wonderful. I just, I'm good. We appreciate the hospitality. Have folks. your spread. I just. I'm Debbie's hungry. like, you, I will eat whatever <laughs> you put out. I mean, really. Uh, just get just, us on your show. I'll be fasting Absolutely. for that day. Queen, That's fine. Queen Nasty was was pitching pretty hard over there. Queen right? Nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen Nasty. Queen Nasty. Queen Nasty. That's her new name. Queen, like, Queen yeah, Nasty, signature, baby. Signature messed she up. Comes. I almost said the other words. She's about to take all your gigs. She's about to take all your shows. No, Midtown did that. That's right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. COVID came, hey. everything closed down, and then this quartet comes out of this place, and Midtown starts making videos, and we're just like, all right, well, <laughs> we're the old guys singing old doo-wop and stuff. They ain't going to want to listen to this. You got, you know. Hey, no, man. Yeah, no, man. No, 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 no. You guys change the game, but all, and, all, and all jokes aside, you know, it's it's what we needed to to push forward, man. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. You know? The content, sure. the creation, I think yeah, that's what's definitely carved out your step, own for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. unique but those videos. You made us old dogs I mean, try to go to work, you know? Yeah, we, no, no, no. we made a video hey. of I Feel Good of Daniel going to get a cheeseburger at McDonald's. <laughs> That's the best. I was, <laughs> and I can't know. find it on YouTube to save my life. So it's on there. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> we were so tired by the end. We're like, what are we going to do? We'll just have Daniel look in the bag for the last 45 minutes, yeah. 45 <laughs> seconds of his wrong. Sticking his hand in. There's about 80 cheeseburgers. You should have seen, yeah. seen, seen me under the glass like this. Perfect, Daniel. Do it again. Yeah. That was terrible. Really bad. You know, you know what I'm saying. All the while, all the while, we're arguing with each other, just yelling. Yeah, yeah, they hated me the whole time. Hey, video shoots are stressful days, man. man. They really are. There's and especially they, they for us. They were for us. They were just. It was just a lot over COVID trying to do it. Oh, for COVID. sure. Yeah, it's it hard. Was, it was a lot. We've never shot videos before. None and of us. And we did three at a time. Directed <laughs> videos in my apartment. I mean, it's just yeah. It was set up everything. It was great. But look, man, we made it work. You know, we had to be absolutely. We had to innovate, you know, and we had to, that, and I think that's man. the thing, ultimately, when we look back at it, it might have been stressful or whatever, but that stuff still stressful. lives there. Well, and I think that, you that's know, right. something that you guys said earlier comes back in this particular part of the conversation where the thing that really came across Chitlins. in those videos, <laughs> yeah, maybe that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just but had to fit that in there somewhere. Gut, yeah, guts is what you mean, right? Hit burgers. <laughs> no, but... What you, what really came across was that you had a clear message mm-hmm. and you authentically delivered that, right? right? Like the production value aside, one one thing or the other, the thing that you put out was the message you wanted to send and it came across really clearly to the audience that was the people sitting in couches all oh, over yeah, the place. Dude. I know it did for me. Thanks, so, man. And then we got oh, an thanks. ethics complaint. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry I sent that boom, in. Boom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, she's like, she's like, cancel great. signature. More that's shows, great. dynasty. <laughs> 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 More shows, <laughs> dynasty. I would never complain about your ethics. <laughs> uh, yeah, not yeah. to our face, anyway. I'm not gonna make that promise. Oh my but gosh. <laughs> no. All right, last, last, last question. Last question. Who, and maybe not so much now, because you aren't competing anymore, and you're doing more shows, and it's probably a little little less pressure, but in the competition cycle, who would get the most nervous? I don't know if the quartet, this quartet specifically, uh, was nervous. I think 
at a certain point, the quartet. Yeah, I was definitely nervous. I, I mean, I was that. Nervous. <laughs> we were all nervous. I was like, speak for yourself, bro. Like, we were nervous. What, but I'm, what I'm trying yeah, to we say were, is, not, yeah. we, we were prepared. We were prepared. Though. prepared. Yes. Um, and the fact that we were prepared, I don't think nerves was something that we thought about going out there. That's good. I think our, I think our, I think our, we our, had a fair amount of like nerves. Like, man, this is a contest. There's great quartets. Right. We got to deliver. Because right. we obviously, your goal is to win, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the narrative was we were the villains and we had wow. all of that okay, extra. we're going to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, we don't have well, to go there. Just throw back. Anyway, continue. Uh, what were you saying? Okay, anyway. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to share any of this podcast. No, probably no. <laughs> what? Five the second round, <laughs> the second round I was really nervous, actually. Sure. <laughs> because we spent like, yeah, because we were we, up till two in the morning out, riding scooters. Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> let me tell the whole story so oh, that they can have the whole right. background. Go ahead. Yeah, you All please back. do it. Tell All me back, how it's please. better. Go ahead. So we were up late riding scooters because it was amazing. I would never rode electronic <laughs> scooters. Said, this is great because it it's amazing. I almost died. You did. <laughs> you did. But that, was good. that was the night. That was the last night. That listen, wasn't. Listen. That wasn't the first. That the wasn't night, that night. The, the night, night of the, the day of the finals. We have a tradition where we go get a hot shave every time we go to the finals. Oh, right I love before, that. and we were doing that, and right outside the door, Paul and I were arguing, cursing at each other. A few hours before the thing, that's who we are. You know what I'm saying? We're just their legs on the street. Hot shave for the <laughs> on, legs. On scooters, oh, a leg. <laughs> on that's scooters. Scooters. That was the passion we shave. needed to go out there and sing that night. That's what it was. That's this what got, applesauce. It was, it was the hilarious. Story, story, please. Please. You could see them going down the road. Yelling at each other on scooters, just yelling. It was hilarious. Oh it was. It was amazing. It yeah, the, the I just I eventually took off, and I was like, "Oh, but it'll be fine." Yeah, yeah you <laughs> just left the stand to rip each other's heads off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just lose our minds. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel eventually came back and saved the day. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Okay. That's right. right. Wonderful. <laughs> That's right. No, but but we kept we kept sharpening our ballad leading into uh, the, the second round. I mean, sharp and sharp, and I'm like. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I feel you there, bro. And uh, as we're walking into the church or the tabernacle, I'm like, Daniel, <clears throat> I'm gonna pitch it down a half step because we're gonna sharp anyway. <laughs> Don't say anything to the other two. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Yep. Oh, um, as you're going under the stage. And me like a fool uh -huh. say, I got on you, stage. Yeah, I go, no. <laughs> like, yeah, that Daniel, sounds like a Daniel's great idea. Like, then it's like, Amazing. it's cool, baby, I got so, you. So wait, the top you. half of the quartet decided to uh, lower yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is yeah. some buttery like, bull crap right there, yeah, man. And, I can't even. Well, bro. We just, we, 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 we took control, but it was. Out of control is what it was. <laughs> Dan, so what Dan does the best the best impression. It, it, listen starts with Daniel starting by himself. So Paul blows the pitch, and then Daniel sounds like this. Go ahead, Dan. Just listen. Yeah, that's, that's where we started. That's where we started. Okay. Oh my god. That's where we started. All right. But you know what? We ended right where we needed we to were be. Perfect. Dan, right in key. Just perfect. pushing that key. Just but right where we needed to be. Dan and I. When Daniel started. Dan and I looked at each other like. You better giddy up because yeah. it's gonna be low. <laughs> but it's like, <gasps> okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, that's that's a big <laughs> secret. If you did not know, our listen song started a half step down, oh and I think God. we all were. I think we all. That's that, you're right. We probably were nervous about that. We all. <laughs> I was. I, I was, was nervous. I didn't, know. I didn't even know. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debbie, yeah. did you do in the finals? Did you do all your songs in the key that they were written? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a true that's a lead, bro. That's a lead. I just sing the melody. I just sing the melody in whatever key they blow. I don't. That care. is amazing. Nasty, baby. That is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> My I'm goodness. I'm gonna be in so much trouble for sharing that. <laughs> <Nasty. laughs> it was just the wrong group. Like it was yeah. the right oh. thing to say. It was just the <laughs> wrong <laughs> group to <laughs> say. <laughs> 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 Can I read the room? Let me let me the look at. Wow, that's crazy, man. We've—I don't think we've ever done that. Nope. Change the key like right as we're walking on stage. Don't recommend it. We changed lots of other things right before we're walking on stage, but not the key. <laughs> Although Spider Farm, when we started Spider Farm, immediately we went up a half step. So everything really? for the rest of the song was up a half step. So our and we didn't know the song very well anyway. So our muscle memory we was, could tell. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Wow. I, I, know. I hate it when song. I don't know a song well and then I get a hundred. I hate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. hundred. Hundred. Really that well. That's my worst thing. We didn't thing. get a hundred in singing. So let's just put it that way. So. <laughs> No, we you guys uh, sure played it off very well. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Acting. 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 
<laughs> well, you, listen. You want to hear, th- hear a quick story of something that was happening on backstage while you were in your final set? Oh, you better believe it. I was, throwing, I was throwing up in the toilet. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was almost passed out throwing up. Yeah, and were. Paul's like, you need to rally. We need to go outside and give the medals. I was like, I'm going to die, but I'll go out there. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> on stage, I was like hobbling it over, almost about to fall over. It was a whole thing. What yeah. happened? He, you just I, got sick? Yeah. He, it like like food poison or something? He oh ate some God. of that salami from the... Like, oh human, human salami. Human salami. From the human salami. salami. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Afterglow food <laughs> and mustard. Those cold cuts. He almost died nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. I did, I did, I did, I did. He was sitting crisscross oh, applesauce <laughs> over the toilet. <laughs> this 7th hour podcast is brought to you tonight by crisscross applesauce. Dumb, dumb, stupid, dumb, dumb. Die nasty. Die nasty. <laughs> Die yeah. nasty. Wow, man! Well, you're not I wish we'd have known this. No, but I we made it in to watch Spider Farm, and I was in the corner, and I could see it from the whole screen. I got a great view, oh, and nice. I was at least in the AC, almost about to pass out, but it was wonderful. <laughs> Sitting on the floor, felt like you were having a fever dream. You're just yeah. like, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, <laughs> who am I watching right now? Yeah, is that lunch break. <laughs> lunch break? No. It was great, oh, man. man. It was great. Crazy. Yeah. Thanks, man. Well, now that we've, now that we've all. You know, encouraged each other Sorry. and cheered each other up and told each other how awesome each other is. What do you say we, we tear all that down? <laughs> so we go into the segment of the podcast called Main Events, where we Ooh. show our biggest failures as, <sighs> as singers. Now, this, this is a, I gotta say, this is a sad main event segment because all of your main events are pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> Everything you sent me, you're like, oh, this is the worst. And it's just like you crushing with one little, and that's it. So, but we're gonna go with what we got, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna celebrate these these failures as best we can. So let's start off. We're gonna start off with with ladies first. I, I, well, I, and all my really epic failures, you know, no. I've been around a long time. They're on VHS somewhere. So. <laughs> wow, <laughs> VHS players. So we could have made wow. it happen. <clears throat> Uh, so if you go to the email, uh, it's going to be the Debbie Cleveland one, the buzz, excuse me. So here's what's cool about this, too. This is it sounds so good. The whole song. And you're on four handheld. Mike. Well, I don't know why we did that. That was stupid. I, it sounds awesome. Well, thank you. I, I agree. It was stupid, but it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys sounded we're all on individual mics yeah. right here, right now, like talking to each other like it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a quartet mic in the middle of us, and we're just ignoring it. You just ignored it. it. Like, just yeah. trying to sing with handheld. Well, I don't know. Skip, we, skip, we skip to about be... halfway. Skip to about halfway. A little more, a little more, a little more. Okay, so should I explain what happened? Yes, before? yes. So apparently we got, to, and this is what I did when you asked for fails. I looked back at YouTube on all the videos that had the least views. I was oh. like, okay, there's, there's got to be some <laughs> crappy not... stuff in these videos with the least views. And so we get to the end, and Karen and I often swap. And sometimes we do swap right off stage Tag before swap. we... But yeah, tag swap or, you know, which whatever. So apparently it looks like and it sounds like before, right when we got to the end of the tag, we both tried to sing the same parts and then we flipped and then you could like, I don't know. It was exactly. one of those. Uh, uh, yes. And then the last note was out of tune because we were like, Ding! and it was bad. <laughs> so there All right, let's watch this. Yeah. Yeah. The right hey, let's get the party started here and now, here and now. Pointed out when it happened. This I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I heard something. But, That's what I'm you know, saying. It's, it's, like, it's amazing. That was good. How though. right? It's amazing how you, the way you described it is what happened. But like the time span of all of those thoughts <laughs> happening between you but and your baritone like, <laughs> was like milliseconds, right? Because you communicate just like you've been singing together how long by that point? Yeah, a long time. And that's what happens on stage though. Those little milliseconds last for an eternity. No, I know the feeling. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the and feeling. And then, yeah. And then you can hear when after the cut, you can hear me go, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like really? yeah, after the applause, oh no. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, play that. Play that last few seconds. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> oh. She said something like that. Yeah, our sweater. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, see, I'm still... humming it. Oh, I'm humming it up, walking oh, up to the mic. You're like fixing it. Yeah, it's already fix over. It. It's and you're like, amazing. <laughs> it's over. <clears throat> oh, that was well. still pretty freaking awesome. I agree. Over the Buzz is one of my favorite quartets of all time. Oh, Agreed. thank you. Agreed. They're Absolutely. one of the greatest Agreed. quartets of all time, objectively. 100%. Yeah. Oh. Especially from a legacy perspective. You talked about like oh, legacy, sure. right? Just the number of places you went, the amount you shared barbershop with people, the teaching that you yeah. guys did. It was, it was such a gift to us. I mean, I just can't even. It was. It was. A gift. Well, my first time hearing you guys live was at an LDJ. I believe it was probably 2011. I'm always so nervous at LDJ. Is anybody else nervous? Oh, when oh they my God. God. For some yeah. reason, yeah. LDJ is the worst. Thank you. It's a big stage. Well, it's a big yeah. stage, and it's all, all like people you know, people you that's know very I mean. well. A, that's what I meant by big stage. And Not it's that so much, one yeah. LED bar light. Then that's yeah. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, Randy, is Randy so Lewis is always sitting in the front, and you know afterwards he's going to yes. come he's up to you something. and tell you the truth. Yes, so, yeah, 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 yeah. like that's always a little daunting. Unless you're, too. he just doesn't tell me anything. We're <laughs> <laughs> not there yet. I'll get there one day. Oh yeah, you will. Be careful what you wish for, young <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, totally yeah. understand that. He tells but, my dad what he thinks of my stuff. <laughs> but the, what you guys saying, and it blew my mind. And I think I well, I had probably I think I just met you. Because I got in my first convention, uh, my first barbershop convention ever was 2011 oh, wow. with lunch break. Wow. When we we got, we mic tested and that was the first time I'd ever. So I was just meeting all these mm. barbershop people. And I think I met you at the at the International that year. And, um, and then I saw you at Labor Day Jamboree and you guys did 14G. And that... Pff, Ah, yeah. Oh, I could play you some fails on fa- that. I could play you some fails of that one too. Really? Oh, it is such a good <laughs> song. You uh-huh. guys just crushed that song so much. Anyway, I was just, that's Thank when you. I fell in love. That's when I was Thank like, you. I'm Aww. a Buzz fan to the core. The and, Buzz. Uh, oh, yeah. Aww. You guys are amazing. Thank so. you. All right, Tony's turn. Ready? Yeah. Is so explaining or are we just doing it? You can explain. Yeah, please. De Capo. Yeah, so the the De Capo one. I teach about this moment. Uh, this song we had been leading up, we got it arranged, uh, this whole final set we got arranged for the quartet because we were hoping to like make the top 10. This was our first time in the top 10 in Toronto in 2013. Um, this is a quartet called DeCapo, and I'm, I've been so lucky to sing with some amazing Dude. musicians over the years. I loved DeCapo. Yeah, a big part of why, why you said that this just sounds really good. It, all the guys around me are just cranking, right? <laughs> and I just beef this post. So I, we're getting up to it, and... Um, I, I, we had sung the song probably 50 or 60 times together all the way through and we're feeling really comfortable 15 or 16 in front of audiences. And, uh, even for a new song, we get to this last part and I'm like, here, oh, <laughs> what <laughs> in star I think we broke your couch. <laughs> the couch is over. The couch is done. <laughs> what the, you got insurance? My back hurts. <laughs> Oh my was, god. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Hey, I'm total insurance. <laughs> we broke the sofa, man. I'm sorry. Bruh. Do you see this couch? Whoa. I think oh, there's oh a leg gone. <laughs> okay, well. Oh, I think, just I ride think, it out, boys. Just ride it out. I think the back detached from the side. Oh, oh, nice. I feel like I'm in a low rider right now. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think we can get up. We're going to fix it. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to sit here like Chippy. Just so. roll, roll with it. Rest in it. Rest these guys. All right. All right. <laughs> I hope your floor is okay. <laughs> It may, it may, it may keep bouncing down. For a hey, I feel like I'm stuck in the corner here. I feel like a roly poly oly. Can you get me out of this thing? In a minute, I'm going to be sitting in oh crisscross applesauce. You're going to need to pull that mic <laughs> even closer, bro. It hey, it's just further away. He's sitting like he's in a Porsche 911, like right now. He's like Low rider. Stop bouncing! Stop bouncing! Stop bouncing! How do you break the leg of the couch? It's not the I leg. Think the I leg. think the back detached from the side. Oh, the back. Uh, yeah, oh, that's boy. what I'm saying. I'm going to lower. I feel like I'm li- like this. Don't push back, though. All right, we're going to fix back. it. We'll fix it. I'm, not, I'm just not moving. <laughs> just settle. Oh, it's you just weren't a moving stage before, prop though, anyway, right? just so people at home know this isn't a real No, couch. it's probably just the just pressure of it. It's probably one of the bolts. I, I, it's it's all good. damn Hollywood sets. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all cardboard. It's painted card. Okay, so. That was incredible. This couch is brought to you by Amazon. Yeah. It's the new Ikea. 
Uh, yeah. So uh, that that would be I, that didn't happen uh, in this video. Um, but uh, so as we're as we're on stage, we had this we had a bit of a complex. Like you were talking about nerves earlier, had a bit of a complex, and we were like trying to prove that we belonged here mm. on this particular final stage, right? Like we were like, let's prove that we belong here. We're not going to win, but let's go out and do what we can to prove that we belong here. And so all of it was about proving that we belong there, b being enough. And uh, like, if you're not already feeling that way, it's, uh, mm. it's not going to be successful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this moment right before this note. And I literally remember saying to myself, as I'm standing there looking at the audience, not about character, not about technique, but literally just like, here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> was this a voice oh, in your head? Oh, I know the feeling, Yeah, no, a voice in my head, just like full oh, on, just like, here it comes. Oh, yeah. And then oh, as I say, here it comes, ouch. I just beef it. I mean, it's just, it's three or four of them. You'll hear it. What, does, you what, won't does, miss uh, it. what does beef it mean? It's, oh. uh, it's just a good solid, like, the folds decide which direction they're going to go all at once. You know okay, what I mean? I'm just ready. ground beef a little bit. Yeah. I'm ready for, the, ready for this. Here we go. <laughs> Let's ground, hear the beef. Ground call beef. That About halfway year. through again. Same thing. Salami, whatever Who you want to call it. this arrangement? Uh, this is J.G. Lombardo. Yeah. Oh, J.G. J.G. Great tenor. Wow, I was just about to say that. Ryan Spitz. I love Ray tenor. She's hanging round and when she kisses, she kisses me and then she holds me tight and says, she says, my daddy, you are out of sight. I love her. Yes, I love her. Hallelujah. I just love her. Can I do without her? Here, comes. Here it comes. That's why I love, love, love her so. Not bad at all, bro. A couple of little yodels. Yeah. yeah. We all have them. One is in flight. Some of them. Are yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Joe, the baritone of this quartet, was the tenor in okay. Iguanas in Flight. Um, I, and Wayne was the bass in Iguanas in Flight. Uh, Wayne, the bass huh. in Decapo, uh, was the bass in Iguanas in Flight. So. You know iguanas in Miami, they don't fly. When it gets cold, they fall they out fall. of trees. They just fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they die. <laughs> it's every, nasty. It's every a big story. They, they really get cold the and they yeah. die yeah. nasty. It's like a prehistoric. <laughs> they fall every out year, trees. somebody they just fall? sends me an yeah, article. Yeah. Every Literally. year, somebody sends me an article about that exact phenomenon. They when it's it the gets biggest, cold, it's pretty crazy too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you know where, where I live, like I did in this couch, so you walk out right there into it. The <laughs> they're just laying, just laying, laying there. there. Look at it laying there. They're stiff too. Laying there. But hey. what you don't want one to do is a thaw out while you're standing there to come alive on you because it's a they come back. Oh Some yeah, of them yeah, do. Oh, they come back. Yeah, yeah. Some then of them just, thaw right. They're mean. Come back and they, I mean, that's pretty scary. My Florida crazy. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. No, get a lizard. Between that and the humidity, I'm out. You're good. It's like I'm. I'd rather live up here in the fog. Yeah, by Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We almost got out of the way here. Next to the Amityville Horror House. Get the heck out of here, bro. Barnes. Barnes. Dateline NBC. It was a cold winter. Every episode of Dateline looks like this. Starts off just like this here. For those of you who don't know, they drove up tonight, and it was one of the foggiest nights I've ever seen. Listen, so they UFO sightings and all. Yeah. I thought we were going to be sacrificed. I didn't know where we were going. It was dark. Dark and stormy. Sacrifice podcast. Yeah. You know, funny story wow. about me and Tony, which I haven't told many people. I don't think you have probably either. <laughs> we were almost in a quartet together. That's true. Really? Yes. yes. We tried a couple of quartets during during the just right after right. this, actually. That's right. It was and the one that we Iguanas on break. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the one that we actually said we settled on and we were like, this is it. Like, let's 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 do this. It was Christian Diaz mm -hmm. on bass, me on baritone. Rick. Tony on lead and Rick Spencer on tenor. Wow. Oh, it was a killer cool. quartet. Yeah, and we, we were, it was a lot of fun. And we, we were pretty. And then I remember the email. I did it. I remember it the email. Me. And Tony sent a message. This was after we sang. We, we met up at International. And we, 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 were, we were all hyped up on it. We we're like, let's, let's talk. Let's figure out a plan, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and I know you were working through things with the couple because you guys had just it decided was, like... You we, know. Yeah. So the situation, I mean, you guys understand like that there's been there's person like 
there's a lot of commitment of time, mm-hmm. energy, effort. And when your family is pulling you in one direction or your job is pulling you in another direction and you try and figure out, Hey, where do I fit in all of this? And Wayne, um, was Wayne had some vocal issues that he was dealing with. And then family also was an issue at the time. And, um, so Wayne, Wayne and the quartet separated. And then the question was, are we going to keep going? And then we, after figuring that all out, we decided that it was the right thing to, to pull back together and, and do that. But that was after I had been trying some other things as well. Right. Um, and, and the quartet was aware of that. Like DeCapo was aware of that while it was happening. So it was, it and we was understood. Just, we understood. Yeah. He said, he's we like, he, we're going to give it another go. And yeah. I think it's. Yeah. One more, one more go, and we'll, we'll see. I we think, just want to. I think KJ seems a little bitter. So I mean, so. listen. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. I have either. journals where I just had to really work, work it out, you know, and die. Yeah. Nasty. <laughs> just pictures of Tony with big red X's. No, and die. <laughs> nasty. That, that, yeah. Tony, that freeze frame of you looks very painful. I'm just going to say. I did not feel I don't good. Know what you're going through there. <laughs> let's, uh, let's play it one more time. Let's I was trying to save it. it man. I mean, when you're trying to save it, like you're not thinking about anything else, no, right? Of course like, not. It's just yeah. all you're doing. Hold is for like, dear life. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, no, David, don't play that again. <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> I've played it a couple times. It's Listen, my my my, I have a terrifying post that I, I have a mental block on. Is our we do uh, after today, after today, nothing will be. Mm-hmm. And I do the post at the end, and I it's a mental block because I I can post and I like, yeah. I, I, but I'm terrified of it on stage for some reason. I just. Mm-hmm. And so every time we get up to the end of that post, literally the only thing going through my head for the last 20 do seconds it, of the it, song are here it comes, here yeah. it comes, here it comes. And I hate it. Yeah, there's it. there's several fails of first day in heaven tag for me. Same thing. And, oh. and we we would tend to sharp it. And if it was just sharp, yes. it just wasn't in the right spot. And yes. so then I would just blame it on them. And we sharp you know. everything. <laughs> we sharp everything. So I know it's going to sharp. So that's what terrifies me. You can just do and what I'm, they do. And I try to have right, right, yeah, exactly. half. But you know, you do the thing where you try, you start trying to feel through the song. You're like, does this feel like we're in key? Like, oh, yeah. You, you have those, mm-hmm. those pillar notes where you know what it feels like mm-hmm. if you're in key and if you're sharp. And you're like, ooh, I don't know if that felt sharp oh oh dang that felt sharp oh we're sharp oh, oh we're, sharp. we're definitely we're sharp. sharp we're definitely sharp here it comes here it comes and that's yeah happens. yep yeah yeah nice the guys were really supportive of me though we basically at the next time we were together at the district convention in september i was like we're singing this in every afterglow room like oh. we're getting over this getting on the horse first, like we're getting over this good right for away you, bro you know because it good was like you. good for you it was one or the other right you need that sometimes yeah yeah you need that reset mm-hmm. you need that recalibration yeah yeah. yeah, no, I just I just have Anthony sing the post, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not strong like that. So just can't do well, that. and I hate it when people say this to me, but when people that I admire have a moment like that, I just feel like, oh, okay, it's okay. Yes, and, right? and there's yeah, lots of other people that I've seen do you know have, and I'm right. sure they hate reliving it and all that. But yeah, it, it makes us all feel. It like, does. It's it well, it funny. This S-S-S-Y. this moment didn't bug me so much, uh, but then Lauren May wrote about it in the Harmonizer, like oh. with a timestamp. What? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so I was like, I was like, why would reading he do the Harmonizer that? like chronology of the fun? <laughs> why would he do <laughs> that? Like, well. <laughs> Oh no! Why would why he was would very he thorough that? in his he coverage? He was very thorough yes. that year. I guess. At two oh four. Watch out! Laughing. Love her so. <laughs> yeah. Watch Tony. <laughs> literally <laughs> drop the ball and shank <laughs> beef <No>. this. <laughs> Watch him beef this tag. Here it goes. Beef. <laughs> Here it comes. Hashtag beef. <laughs> Thank God for Daniel God. and the rest of Signature. That's so funny. Thank you for sharing your thought process, too. That, that Thank you for there, Daniel You're there saying, tips. okay, everybody, here's uh, the big no. Yeah. Listen to this. Like, that's just so, I can feel that so much. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank and it's you just, it's, it's an unhelpful feeling, right? Yeah. Like, we do it to ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. it's easy to shed that once you have confidence in the people around you and yourself. And, mm-hmm. and also yeah. once you have that moment, you know, because then, yeah, yeah, cause then it doesn't matter. Lot, right. Whatever. I can yeah. There it is. I can live through it. It ain't going to be any worse there. than that. Did you just throw off of that? <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's hit, uh, let's hit, did you guys, did you send the other one to David? Mm-hmm. Great. I sent two of you. So the one, uh, the one that, that uh, Will emailed to you. I emailed two, I think. Okay. Uh, let's just pick one. I don't even know. The fail? Well, it's, oh I yeah, the fail. <laughs> is it this one? I have nothing. Well, no. yeah, this is more of like a a, a physical fail. Um, okay. 
Why Paul, is it a physical fail? It's not a physical fail. It's not a physical fail. fail. A physical fail. Let, let, me, let me just tell the story. Give me a second. It's just a back story. Okay. What, okay. I'm gonna say, what I'm going to say is this. This was a moment of a lot of emotion. We were singing the song. Mm -hmm. This was probably the most connected we had felt to the song. It, it just happened to be on that, that hit of it. And then we get to something, and I'm watching the videos a couple weeks after, and I call Paul right away in like... A laughing stupor because I see I see his reaction to a big chord that we do at, at the climax of the song. It comes two thirds of the song and then we tail off into the tag, right? And you know, it's iconic. I have nothing, nothing. I don't have you. That whole part, right? Whatever. So we get to that and then somehow the camera goes directly to Paul's face and Paul goes through maybe <laughs> five different emotions within like a two second, three second span. Okay. I love and, it. And, you know, that's why, that's why I said it was like more of like a physical a thing. visual. So because the best you, part is at my house I have a projector, so we put it up on the projector screen and all I see is Paul's face and we watched it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like how many hundreds screen. of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, let's Beautiful. watch this again. All right. I'll narrate a piece of it. It's just already yes, pretty please. good. Do we got the timestamp? All right. Don't walk away, oh, don't you know? Don't walk away from me. Don't you dare walk away from me. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. No. doing it i think we are we're the best ever we're gonna win <laughs> oh my gosh the process the mental and if, and if you're to ask him that's probably exactly what he was how close was i you think who knows? <laughs> I was enraged at that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to go! Crazy, crazy. Give me that medal. Oh, exactly. my gosh. Jacket. That face. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, <laughs> that whole week was a blur. When I went back, there's a couple of doozies in those videos. I'm oh just like, God. what were we doing? Dancing like fools, a whole bunch of things. <laughs> I mean, we could have been disqualified on the onset of contests. That's very true. Because That's Daniel. True. That's very true. Oh, yes, we can, we can the next song oh, no. we got, actually, we can tell you all this. There's... There's a little message that Daniel tells his pips right before we start his our first pips. song. Yeah. Uh -oh. we, we got to a point where, where we, you know, we were just like, you know what, we, we've practically done all this work practicing. And when I walked out, I don't know what I was thinking. You wanted uh -huh. that sauce. But I was, you know, sauce we walked out. We wait, took wait, out don't say it. Don't say it. Let, play it. Play the other uh, oh, video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the other emails. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty evident. I think you hear right at the beginning, right, right the during box. the pitch. Let's see right if you can hear box. it. Right this is going to make this uh, push into PG-13 here. Oh. <laughs> Is it think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the one. Oh, we're just gonna have to get through the. Uh, oh, there we go. There you go. That's what he say? Hold on. Hold on. Rewind that. that. Rewind that. Rewind that. Rewind that. What do you say? <laughs> what do you say? Y'all ready? ready? Let's, Let's do, do the, the damn, damn thing. thing. Oh. oh you heard a way worse word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Is that what he man. said? Yeah. yeah. He said, Let's He's, do the damn thing. Yeah, he oh. says, I'm blowing the pitch. He says, y'all ready? Let's do the damn thing. Oh, That's all we need. That was okay. Kind of, okay. And then, and then thing came from there. And that was, you know, the, yeah, we, the was, Franklin respect. Iconic, we, were coming, we were coming swinging. Yeah. So oh, I love, love that. We can say that now because we probably would have got disqualified. So. Well, you know what? A funny. They, they can't come back. Sure, I thought, back. I didn't know Try. someone else had, I mean, if you consider damn, a curse word. I didn't know someone had cursed on the international stage before because guess who else said damn on the international stage? Jake, Tick, Jake Tickner <laughs> I heard that was with uh, Newfangled Four. I forget which song it was, but it was something happened. It was in the middle give of the song. Give Me Four also. Did Give Me Four do it too? And they're battling. Oh, that's right. He goes, he goes it's the way you're looking at me. And there it says, damn I do. So, oh, as part of the song. As part mm -hmm. of the song. Ah, Jake said it as like a word, like a reaction. Oh. He's like, oh, damn. Like some some moment like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sent him a message. He's like, my man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, first. first. <laughs> Ours was a little bit more hood than that. Yours was yeah, exactly. very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His was crisscross applesauce. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there Darn actually, it. Yours was crisscross applesauce. I have a great right. cursing, on, cursing on stage at a barbershop contest story. 
okay. not of me cursing. But <laughs> of course I, not. Of course not. Right. Should That's I say, right. Of course not. Should I say the word or should I just imply say the word? It. Okay. I'll bleep so it. You can quack. Um, so <laughs> quack, quack. So, quack. I'm, I'm over quack. in Sweden, so already the like standard is just different, right? Oh, yeah. And there's this youth quartet. There's not, a, there's not one of them that's above 18. They're <laughs> kids, children, right? Fearless. They're up there, and um, the bass comes up and blows the pitch, and he... Oh, no. Oh, no. And the quartet goes, and they all look at the bass, and they go, no, no, it's, it's oh, no. and he goes, ah, oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> and they start singing. It's like a seventy-eight. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> So it was like, it was like an incredible quartet. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> this kid was so nervous. It was Aww. unbelievable. That is, that <laughs> is <amazing. laughs> Yeah, it was in Sweden. It was hilarious. Wow. I'm going to have to get a big duck sample for that one, man. We ain't getting away with that. No. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. I asked before I did you it. Did. I, mean, I, I told I'm going to get a big whack. No, I don't mean that. if we actually did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, no, man. No, that, no, that would have been done. I said the F word super loud earlier today, right? Didn't you? Yes. Did, Didn't I? I don't, I don't remember. On in, the show? In yeah. front of the kids? Earlier today, I <laughs> right yelled. Here. I looked you at him. Right you here. said, there's kids here. And I said, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's oh. right. I yeah, that might have been. Oh, oh tonight. House, we don't know. That's all right. I'm going to have yeah. a lot to bleep. It's okay. It's going to be extra word for you. That's all right. KJ bleep, bleep, Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. I, for one, would love to hear you guys sing something. You guys up for it? Absolutely not. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. We're gonna let you guys enter into the vocal pods of Live Loud Studios. Let's do it. So let's right. do it. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Love it. All Hello. right. You guys ready to roll? <laughs> we sure are. All right. Let's do it. What uh, What song are you guys gonna sing? Uh, we're gonna do a song from Bread. Called Baby, I Want You. Oh, and okay. it was uh, one of Gene's last arrangements yeah. that he did specifically Come for Signature. Oh, I love it. So. <laughs> All right. I do. 
baby, I'm on me. Baby, I'm on you. I know those guys. <laughs> no. Amazing. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> We're back. back. We are. Almost in one piece. Almost. <laughs> oh, that's the, yeah, I got you. Yeah, we're good. All right. So I want to get, I want to hear from, uh, from each of you. I want to hear kind of what are your biggest barbershop influences? Quartets, arrangers, coaches. Singers, whatever it is, who are who are your top influences uh, that that have kind of helped shape who you are today as a barbershopper, Tony? One of my biggest, uh, Tony. 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 No, hey, what's up, Tony? Tony. Tony. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Boom. Tony. They sound the same, so I can understand how that would have been confusing. <laughs> No, you have an answer. I'll think of my answer while you're talking. Well, you should, you should oh. just talk. And I, well, pretend like you're talking. I'm going to oh. talk. I'm going to well, talk. Gonna answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like zooming all over again. <laughs> Go for it. I'm afraid I'm going to fall. That's why. It's, it's, it's in my brain. Like, I'm literally thinking it's going to happen. Stop gonna bringing it up. Okay, it so won't happen. A couple, of, a couple of answers to that question um, without going too long. The the I think that when you look back at the great quartets, even without thinking about just as a lead singer, you go back to looking at the great quartets. We talked about the sun tones earlier, but you think about the Boston common and, Mm. um, and vocal spectrum and, um, a bunch of other quartets that are in that realm of identity. Um, the buzz, uh, ambiance, these quartets that just showed who they were so Mm. authentically. I think that I take a lot of inspiration growing up from, in an era where Keepsake and Gashouse Gang mm. were a formative, um, f- the winners during a formative time of my life and when I really started singing Barbershop. So I think that um, I take a lot of inspiration from them and from then almost immediately after finding the great quartets uh, and finding that moxie that's not in any way rooted in arrogance, but mm. completely rooted in that preparation the confidence that what they're giving is valuable um, is something that people want and that is worthwhile. Mm. Uh, and f- having that be something that I produce has been something that I've aspired to be. So I, w- I would say I was inspired by that, um, awesome. by those singers. Yeah. Mm. Excellent choices. That's for sure. What about you, Debbie? I was just, <clears throat> pardon me, thinking as he said that, that it seems like at the appropriate time, the right role models come into your life. Come, yeah. So I remember starting out as a brand new barbershopper, at, you know, in college, right out of high school. I actually sang in a high school quartet, too, called the Beauty Shop Four. But, uh, but we Beauty weren't Shop really 4. affiliated with Barbershop or Sweet Adelines. It was just kind of a picket thing anyway. But doing in college, you know, these there would be the next regional quartet that I was like, oh, listen to what they do. You know, mm. it just seemed like there was always somebody great to listen to and then during a really formative period after showtime had been together for a while but pardon me we we were playing around up in the metals and just you know not really didn't know our direction um i had a close association with keepsake as well Mm -hmm. and getting to be around them and hear the music and hear everything that they did and watch their professionalism and watch how seriously and from the heart they took the music and Mm -hmm. and what they produced and then being also doing shows with the gas house gang and, and seeing them too. I mean, just, I, yeah. that's funny that you said those too, that th- those were sticking in my mind as well. And wow, what great, just, just sit and soak up and learn. And, yeah. um, you know, so, so many great wins. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Excellent choice. I would be remiss if I didn't mention also, um, my dad is, is a long time barbershopper and mm. I wouldn't oh, be yeah. singing barbershop if it weren't for, uh, my dad started singing in the whooping cranes. So it's his fault is what Detroit. you're saying. Basically. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely his fault that I'm here on hey, multiple Bill. levels. Um, uh, but my mom was incredibly supportive of me doing it. And my dad, uh, definitely inspired me to do it. He was singing mm. actively in quartets and choruses my whole life. So 
huge part of. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah, when I when I got in barbershop, uh, my quartet, my first quartet, um, had the privilege of having uh, Bob Franklin um, mm-hmm. as as our main coach. Um, Crazy. Through my first, I think, two or three years of a barbershop, and he was a very big inspiration to us. But um, also quartets that that were from Florida, like Autograph and yeah. um, uh, Wise Guys, was a big one. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but the first like three, four years of my quartet, we must have did shout like, out to Brett like thousands of shows with Wise Guys, Wise Guys. But they really showed us, you know, how to be. They probably just, showed you things you never needed. Yeah, to. Things, <laughs> that we did not yeah. Yeah. Um, Amazing. They weren't called Wise Guys for yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, they, but I mean, but just, just you know, just to see these guys get up on stage for us and their stature and the way. The confidence that they had, regardless freedom. of freedom, yes, they, freedom. they yes. really did. Um, it, it just it, it showed us to just go up there and um, just you know have have as much confidence as we can to sing and do what we do. Um, but yeah, that's those are probably the main. That's things. awesome. Love it, love it. What about you, love? So the question was, who inspires us as quartet singer? Who've been your biggest inspirations in barbershop quartet? individuals so I got a shout out it's gonna be tastes like vinegar saying these words but uh, the first person I the first person whose voice <laughs> I, I really listened to was this, nasty. Was this <laughs> little afro curly haired Dominican from Miami half Dominican half white and he's uh, he's singing um, <laughs> Uh, I want to get every angle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was it was the fact that I saw someone like myself singing this art form, but doing it in his way. And at, at that time, Paul was singing a lot of doo-wop music oh, yeah. with his quartet, and I was in the quartet right behind his in high school, so I got to kind of see his come up, and then I would go to him and Daniel's rehearsals all the time. So the truth is, my first influences are, are in this room. You know, these two yeah. guys, I, I watched them do their thing. You know, I used to sit in their rehearsals for hours awesome. on end. Yeah. And, we, they, and we wouldn't let him sing. Yeah. <laughs> they let me sing one tag at the end of the night. It was usually a hanger of some sort of... You definitely paid post. your dues, sir. Yeah. I did. Yeah. You know, I sa- and I would yeah. sit and watch Gene coach his quartet. And I would sit and watch them coach later on with George Gibb and all these different guys. And it was just, you know, I was a student of the craft. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't take voice lessons. I didn't do any of that stuff. So really just watching my peers do their thing and excel gave me an opportunity. Wow. And then people like Gene Cocroft specifically, who was a nurturer of that. You know, he, he was a big proponent coming into our schools. That's how we met. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Paul was his man of note, and I was Paul's man of note. There was just like a history there. And mm-hmm. Gene coming in and working with his group and with our group. And then later on when... Um, we kind of put signature together and I asked him to be part of this. You know, he jumped on it and him and Iris, I remember our first rehearsal with Matt inside of his living room. Anybody who's been in his house, everybody knows that living room. That's mm-hmm. where he coaches. Oh, yeah. And Iris would sit next to him and, you know, we sing a couple bars. And I think we're singing five foot two or something, something we shouldn't have been singing at that time. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and we're singing it and he turns to Iris. He goes, you know, Iris, these four walls haven't heard a sound like that in a long time. Hmm. And I remember that being the first time where I'm just like, okay, you know, this is, wow. you know, this is like a rite of passage. He's he's really investing into the, the future of Signature, and you know, he was mm-hmm. arranging. He arranged that song we just sang, and it just, mm-hmm. yeah. it was a culmination. You know, it started with my peers that he nurtured, and then later on became to him. You know, we became really close. We had a lot of really close conversations with him later on in life, which, for me, I mean, helped shape the way I look at life today. So, wow, you know. ah, love that man. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I know that that living room. Mm. Has yeah. a yeah, it's very special. It's special. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have the house anymore, unfortunately. But that living room was, you know, a lot of music was made in that room for yeah. sure. I mean, not to go backwards either, but I think Sunshine District in general had so many people. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. for all of us, for sure. Mm-hmm. I think they, Alex, they did Tony. a really good job of Debbie investing in the mm-hmm. youth. I think they were one of the pioneers. Hundred percent right. districts. Yeah, absolutely. Invest in youth. Yeah. And Absolutely, and, 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 yeah. and some of those goats are still doing yeah, it today. Tony, the Tony goat, and Debbie are going everywhere. Tony giving of your time as well. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just going around and doing all these youth workshops and all that stuff. I mean, we're yeah, the work is definitely being done, and I hope that you know the next generation feels as inspired as we did when these other folks came came by our way. So love it. That's all we can hope for. Thanks, man. What about you, Viking? So, um, <laughs> well, holla. Well done. Um, <laughs> when I started Barbershop, actually, 
I knew nothing about barbershop. And so, <laughs> so uh, a guy, I was singing in a community chorus, and a guy named Randy Miller came up to me after one of our shows, and he was like, you need to sing barbershop. I was like, what is, what is barbershop? Like, what year was this? This is in 2002. Okay. So I joined, I started barbershop in 2003. I was a founding member of the chorus in South Carolina. No longer chopper anymore, but awesome. So one of our coaching events, he was like, I got some friends at barbershop, just a few people. So one of our coaching things, he in walks Freddie King, Joe Connolly, and Don, and Don Barnick all the same day. I'm just like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> hi, yeah, hi. <laughs> um, no, it was it was very special being that because I I knew nothing of barbershop. I didn't know people. I didn't know quartets. I knew yeah. absolutely nothing. And then they're like, I they're like this. He's singing this quartet. I'm like, what? Really? They're they're yeah. right here in front of me. So that was really cool. And then later in later in my barbershop career, I mean. I had a lot of people come up to me and support me. And one of my biggest supporters out there is Brett Littlefield. Like he has oh, been wow. absolutely huge in my life. Like Shout he, out to Brett. He reaches out to and me all the time, checks in with me. Stunned, and, man. Love that guy. And he, great guy. anytime Brett's we're together, great... he just makes sure, makes sure we're good. And I'm, I, yeah, I, he's awesome. So, I love yeah. that, man. <clears throat> you know, dude, I gotta say, Dan, I, when I, I moved to Nashville in 2008 and it was, and I had not been involved in barbershop, uh, really uh, outside, out of high school for you know that six seven years and um i went to my first dixie district yep. contest with the music city chorus I, and i remember i sang a, a tag with you it was in chattanooga it was in chattanooga that's exactly oh. right that's where i met you yep and i remember thinking like holy crap this guy's voice is insane but you like had a real hard time like staying in key mm -hmm. and like that's what you said paul too yes. right in the yeah, beginning yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, well, I, I say that because now, like, yeah, you're all uh, you're so freaking accurate, dude. So we we were talking, right. Midtown and I were talking about this. Is he like, doesn't have a choice. It's unreal how does, just laser, does. how laser accurate. It's you not are. always something people can learn, though. Yeah. Well, I know, well, that's but that's amazing. my point, though. That's so there's isn't that crazy? There, there's yeah. something I've about used, that. Actually. I've used you. I've used you example. Your example really? in a lot of coaching sessions for people who who struggle with one aspect of singing or or another. And they're like, oh, you're either born with it or you're born. And I'm like, Absolutely. bro, listen to me. I know a lot of people who could not do this thing or could not do that thing. And I bring you up. I'm like, dude, he's one of the greatest basses of all time. He's got the most incredible instrument and he's one of the most accurate singers you'll hear. But I remember a time when I sang tags with him and, you know, we couldn't yeah. even we couldn't even keep him in key for, for a tag. And he worked and he worked and he worked and he got the right, you know, people around him and he and now look at him. And anyway, I say that because mm -hmm. it's, I, I got to you were one of the first people I met in barbershop when I moved to Nashville. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, just seeing where you are now, it's just incredible, man. I love it. You fast forward and then we sing John is my own tears for the first time. Brett walks up to you backstage and says, you know, that's your song now. That's your song now. Yeah. I think oh. We're not singing that song anymore. Wow. So, yeah. you know, that was, again, another moment of writer of passage. Passing when you look back torch, and you man. take inventory, you look at those things, it's like the graciousness that we receive from some of these folks is really is really what stuck with us this whole time. And that's, yeah. at least that's what I hope to to pay forward. You know, man, I love that. Somebody remember a moment they had with one of us. Yeah. That's, uh, we, we, sorry, you were going to say something. You were saying. So, sorry. With about the pitch thing is a lot of people don't know this is growing up. I had tubes put in my ears. So I had oh. very, very poor hearing when I was a kid. I had about 30% of my left, my right ear and about 60% of my left ear. Um, I had almost, I had nine injured replacements in my left ear and 10 in my right ear. Holy and so cow. I couldn't hear for about five years of my life. I had hearing aids at everything. Wow. So my mom was like, you need to sing. And I'm like, yeah, but I can. I played piano and I was awful at it, but I always <laughs> loved music. So getting into this and being able to do this at such a high level is it's pretty freaking awesome. That's amazing. Woo! So being able I to go that. through all that stuff, Good like you, bro. seeing kids now today, it's like one of the kids we saw today. He was like, I can't, I can't do that. I was like, yeah, you can. You, yeah. you can. Absolutely. I was like, I couldn't where I was. If I was your age, sing, I couldn't do what you could do at your age. Yeah. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. So yeah, I, I love to see that now. Good for you, That's man. awesome, man. What a cool thing to be able to use your story for that, man. Mm -hmm. It's like my wife too. If, if you've ever heard my wife sing and you know, she's mm -hmm. incredible. Unbelievable. What she does. She lost all the hearing in her left ear hmm. in 2009 randomly 
She had an autoimmune incident in her ear, and she just one day was like, you hear that ringing? And then two days later, she went to the audiologist, and all her hearing was gone. Oh, no. And she was a singer for a living. So it's like, that's a nightmare, right? But she has continued and found a way to work around it, and now she has her dream job singing full-time for the military. She's a rock star and mm-hmm. just overcoming things like that. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, so that's awesome that you get to use that story when you go to these school visits and, and stuff to kids mm-hmm. who are insecure about whatever it is that they struggle with, you know. Everybody has it. So. That's right. I mean, mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. What about yeah. you, Paul? I mean, Gino. Gino. That's my guy. guy. Yep. That's my guy. It's my man, Pots and Pans. That's it. Mm-hmm. I mean... Luckily, our uh, chorus director was really open-minded and very supportive of us doing a lot of different things. We had jazz, vocal, madrigal, concert chorus, Mm -hmm. and there was a harmony explosion that was taking place, and a quartet called Wise Guys was singing at it, (laughs) and Station 59, Yeah, Chris Coffey, one of my first heroes in Barbershop, for sure, Mike O'Neill, that quartet. Mike O'Neill, that's my my guy. I remember watching him, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do that like that. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. And you did. You did. I had a loving daughter. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna sing like that. Absolutely. I'm gonna do that. You're such a fool. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and Gene was there with the Miamians, and one day he came to our school to do a presentation, and we had a little quartet there w- at the, with Juan and Gilbert and Ronnie, and uh, he pulled us to the side. He said, "Would you like me to coach you?" And I was like. Sure. We just started going. You to need a little house. more twang in your voice when you talk. To, <laughs> yeah. you know, Would you like me to coach you? <laughs> Irish. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, but it just we developed a, a friendship. You know, I mean, yeah. when he passed, um, you know, his grandkids carried his casket, and Iris said, "You carry his casket too, because wow. you were like his grandson." Mm. You know, and it was wow. so powerful. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a huge loss. Him, yeah, him man. not being here, but he believed in me immensely, immensely, hmm. and um, so I mean that's that's my major major influence. But also Tim Brooks and Clay Hine. Oh yeah, got, man! They gave me my first opportunity to really compete at the next level, bro. And um, you know, I, I, I don't we don't talk about that as much. I mean, it's the singing, but the relationships you make with the people that you meet like Tim and Clay displayed a uh, just such good men good family yeah. men committed responsible and just and I got to see that day in and day out while I was singing with them and it was yeah. it had a profound effect on me I mean they both you know have my utmost respect and, yeah uh, and I hold them in high regard as far as um, you know how barbershop is um, impacted me, but Love from that. quartet from a quartet standpoint, wise guys had mm-hmm. a close impact on us. Autograph mm-hmm. and the Ruben mm-hmm. Brothers, obviously. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, Ruben Brothers. Yeah. You know the uh, Rounders, <clears throat> Sun Tones. I mean, yep. Keepsake, ne- Platinum. like you said, Randy Lowe's, Ned Fogler, and we mm-hmm. we, we leave the, one person out, the Tony DeRosa. Tony DeRosa, oh, sure. oh, big, yeah. CD. big for us, even Tony DeRosa. Yeah. our younger years, and even yep. now. So. And I get to the Breeding yeah, family, always. the Billings. I mean, yeah. there's so many. There's so Debbie many was a coach invested in many of my college quartets. I mean, it, yeah, you had a lot of those. Yeah. I did have a <laughs> I've been around the block. Yes, yeah. I'm a journeyman, yeah, okay? <laughs> I am a journeyman. Yeah, George George uh, was with George us Gip since, oh. George since Gip. we were kids and then he was I mean, an integral part of Signature and, and everything we did. Man. So and he I mean he took the torch after Gene's passing and he was very gracious with his time with us as well. Yeah. So But imagine showing up at your first uh, Fort My- they used to have contests in Fort Myers. It was like this huge arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. And the first quartet contest I ever watched, it had Platinum and Jukebox. I don't know if you remember Jukebox, but mm-hmm. it had Fred Farrell and Roger Ross, and I think Sean Devine. Not Sean Devine, Milligan. Sean, Sean Milligan. Milligan. Sean Milligan. Sean Milligan. Yeah. Yeah. Slip. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a throwback there for a second. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Very, good. Hey. Very good. Great, great quartets. Great quartets. I mean, Sunshine is just... What a what a great you guys are district. Dude, loaded, man. What a great yeah. district to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just Very to, nurturing of the youth. Just to bring that around too, I I th- thinking as we were all talking, you know, looking mm-hmm. back, 
But now stepping into this arena again, like again, those those heroes are coming into play. Like I and I think about quartets like I want to find a style for myself, like what Signature has done for their themselves. And I want to be slick and cool like Midtown. And, and I want to be I want to have those standing ovation moments on the tags like like mm-hmm. first take. And and I want to have vocal prowess like GQ. And I want to be, yeah. you know, I want to be dynamic and ringy like the ladies. And there's just all new quartets, too, that become mm-hmm. heroes. Yeah. And they give all of us fresh life of and things to aspire to. So yeah. thank you all for Absolutely. what you're doing and just feeding the rest of us, you know, wanting to, to do more. Artistry. Do, do Midtown again. Artistry. What was the Midtown thing again? Uh, uh, <laughs> what did I say? Average I don't know what I said. and mediocre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just that's what I thought. I breezed over it. I just kind of breezed over it. But the bass needs there, some work. <laughs> bass needs to improve a little bit. Yeah. The bass can't post mediocre. anything. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. She said, you, <laughs> nice Pratt Falls. You threw yourself on the floor. Yeah. That's hey, commitment, brother. That's if there's one thing I can do, I think it's, your shoulder's still out of yeah, socket. That's yeah. right. I'm like, yeah. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> that was, Love you, Christian. That was the greatest thing about the the comedy bit, though, is that in in with lunch break, <laughs> that you were always the dirty dirt, you know, mm. and then the dirty dirt. The, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we all know what she meant. Call him a dirty We all know. We all we all knew what she meant. Radio. He was the dumb dumb stupid. So he was the dumb dumb stupid. <laughs> KJ's the radio of Midtown? Oh my god. No, she said at lunch break I was the nerd to nerd. Oh. And then lunch break he was the, but then oh. but then in the Midtown bit the it's other guys were Midtown. the dirt to dirt and you were like the you know the too cool for school one right. which was just just the perfect turnaround but anyway. That was funny. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need to talk about your hundreds anymore. We can go back to us. Yeah, let's move back to. Well, you know, in, in all seriousness, I think I got to spend some really, really sweet times with Gene. I didn't know him nearly as long as you guys did. And when I worked for Harmony Foundation, I got to go spend uh, some time at his home, and I got to interview him, and um, got to capture some footage that's never been seen before. In fact, I don't even have it. It's it's being held by somebody else who has the hard drives. Um, but I got to interview him and he kind of told me a little bit about his story and talked about his, you know, his involvement with youth and, and whatnot. But anytime you talk about the Sunshine District or, you know, the society in general, but um, who's had the biggest impact on on the youth in the Sunshine District, Gene's name is oh, by far. Always, always there. I just feel like it started with him. It did, man. He really, he really created a, a, a movement that has spawned, I mean, how many great quartets, how many great quartet singers that came from his inspiration, from him investing in them and, and seeing you guys, you know, come directly from that is, is pretty special and knowing how much of an influence he had on you. Um, I just remember you guys coming out with the gene, pins yeah. as well and just knowing what he meant to you guys um you know i just we were talking about this on the last episode about how how the things that we pass on like what you said to that kid yes you can you can do that you have no idea how how far that ripple will go you have no idea who that kid is going to influence and who that kid's going to influence and mm-hmm. you know here you are champs you know at the end of the day, writing a ripple that he planted, that he started when you guys were just kids. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty, really yeah, pretty special. Pretty awesome. And it makes, to, and it makes the job like it makes Debbie and my job easy at an event like tomorrow. Right. Because we get to just ride the wave of excitement that they get from hearing you all sing at such a high level with such clear authenticity. And yeah. Gene did his, did, uh, did the keynote at HU, um, Mm. what was it now almost eight years ago now Mm -hmm. um and one of his big things was we we need to sing for people and we need to sing well for people we need to we need to take our art and make it really fantastic and really earnest and put it out there for people and you guys embody that not just as a quartet but as individuals people and it makes our job as educators just easy as pie because they we we go let's be like that and they go yeah and yeah. then we do it for a day and they get excited. And like you said, the ripple effect goes after yeah. that. So just, it's a credit to you all that, that, um, a legacy, like what Gene put that was effective for you 
is going to be there for kids tomorrow, kids everywhere that you go. The harmonizers have had you guys up three or four or five times for more like seven or eight youth I think. events. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it'll be again wow. in March, and yeah. um, it's because of that effect. That Some you of those have kids are grown and married by now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that have yeah. seen you, you call guys. them old. <laughs> it no. makes a difference. We are getting old. Yeah. So you're just a really meaningful group. That legacy you're trying to build is already there. No, that's awesome. Well, I hope he's that's smiling down saying, Thanks, on us, mm-hmm. feeling like we're doing his work. Yeah. Well, I think he is, man. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's it's appropriate. I wanted to close out our episode watching a pretty special performance that Gene gave back in 2011, which I was there. Were you guys all there mm-hmm. at that performance for the SEC? You didn't I, get to I, be there? I was not. David, if you can you pull up the uh, the other video, the Sun Tones. This was a this was such a special <clears throat> moment. This was their fiftieth anniversary. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This was their fiftieth anniversary. Yeah, I was sick. I wasn't there, and uh, I didn't even know. I remember the conversation because I didn't even really know who the Sun Tones were at this point. I was still brand new to barbershop. Mm. I remember I asked Rick Spencer um, when he was subbing on a lunch break gig, and I asked him, I was like, who, "Who's your favorite tenor?" And he said, probably Gene Cocroft. And I was like, oh, cool. Is he, what, what, what quartet was he in? And he just looked at me like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you noob. And, like, uh, dirty dirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was a dirty dirt move moment. Dum dum, dum dum dum. But that's when he told me, and, and Rick told me, and then the other guys in Music City Chorus just kind of really explained to me kind of who Gene was, who the Sun Tones were, and what they meant to so many people in society. And so then that next year, when we went to International with Lunch Break, I got to watch this performance. And, uh, you know, I just sat there jaw dropped, just thinking about it, what everyone had told me about who, who the Suntones were and who Gene was. And I got to take this, this performance in and it, it just meant so much more to me. So I want to, I want to let us, uh, let us watch this performance of Gene singing Danny Boy at their 50th anniversary in 2011. We've been privileged to perform the music from some of America's best composers and best vocal arrangers. And one of them sitting right here on the stool. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling From glen to glen and down the mountainside The summer's gone and all the roses falling It's you, it's you must go and I must buy. But come you back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. It's I'll be. When you come and all the flowers are dying, if I am dead as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say. And 
and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Oh, Daddy boy, oh, Daddy boy, I love you so. Rest in peace, Danny boy. You know. <laughs> Still got it. It's pretty special. It's pretty special. <clears throat> Think about how many people they touch by singing on the Jackie Gleason show and all that stuff all those years. Right? That's crazy, man. I think that I think that's yeah, what we can all aspire to is that is getting outside of our like our circle, right? Like right. of barbershop is so insular in a lot of ways. And we've experienced so much wonderful community and, and I think that a quartet like the Suntones is a great example of a quartet that goes out and is has mass appeal, has popular appeal and it's Yeah. Obviously valuable. Incredible. Yeah. And you guys embody so much of that. And I think that's that's going to be such a huge part of your legacy, you know, of what you guys are talked about 20 years from now and what you did for the society, what you did for Barbershop and how you how you showed how Barbershop can can do new things and reach new people. And uh, I'm, for one, thankful for that. I'm, I'm really grateful to call you guys friends. I'm grateful that I get to share the 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 gold medal on my chest with you guys. It made me so proud to see the Suntones with their yeah. gold medals mm-hmm. and yeah. for these guys to have like, feel like, yeah, we're, we're, I'm sure they would never say they feel worthy of that. No, no but, but, I know what you mean. but yeah. it's there. It's, it's just, it's, we're it's awesome. Of, well, yes, I think that's part, part of the of reverence of this whole thing, right? Is that we know we walk on the shoulders of giants that's right. and we're exactly. trying to just hold up the, the structure for the next person to come. That's, mm-hmm. ah, dude, yeah, that's, it. that's exactly it, man. And that's the beauty, I think. That, that for me, is the most um, relieving thing after winning is that I'm no longer having to worry about this grind and trying to mm-hmm. prove something and trying to accomplish anything. Is Now I can pour all of myself and all of my accolades and all of my experience into helping other people yeah. right. accomplish those same dreams and, mm-hmm. and, and reach their full potential. And that, that, to me, is infinitely more satisfying than you know, anything I've won or I've, I've accomplished. So, and the best way we're going to do that is product placement. That's <laughs> right, baby. Speaking of which, <laughs> what are y'all drinking real quick? The Let's seventh see. hour podcast tumbler. <laughs> Debbie, where is that seventh hour podcast tumbler from? Customquartetstuff.com. Customquartetstuff.com. That's right. Hi, Heather. So Heather Cryer. Hi, she's Heather. the best. The best. She makes incredible stuff. This is so nice. Isn't that I nice? have to say, it's, it is it's really nice. yeah, it's the, really the nice. logo is beautiful yeah. and uh, it's well it's made. Amazing. I've enjoyed my drink; it stayed cold all night. It's, it's made all my night. beverage taste even better. Every, it's wonderful. Exactly. It adds so much. Frosty cold beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Go I think to that's what the couch. To be honest, that's probably you. what it is. It's it's <laughs> a little, you know. Yeah. Go, go to uh, go to customquartetstuff.com where uh, where you can get all these beautiful things like these mugs and these tumblers and thousands of other things. She's incredible. She does everything. Hey, and congratulations to you on getting this podcast oh, going. Hey. I am honored to be on episode three. And hey. I just it's really, really fun and I cool. And I'm going to be a viewer, listener, whatever Absolutely. it is. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. No, for sure. I'm, it's an honor to me that you guys took the time to come up and be a part of it. And and uh, I have high hopes. And I, I'm, I'm very grateful that you guys are, are willing to help me get this thing rolling. Because I think people want to see their champs hanging out, talking about shop and their life and and uh you know getting to react to some incredibly inspiring videos and 
watch each other fail and, and break your chair and, and break, break chair. my furniture. So well, you, you know, did, break you did the, the right thing. You bribed us with food, and we came. We came, <laughs> That's we came right. Yeah. That's all it takes. We came well, we came. We came in a frightening. You know, <laughs> yeah. I drove you through the oh, Dateline yeah. NBC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we, Murder if we're never seen <laughs> again, That's just right. saying no, this right. could be our last public Daniel's appearance. It's the signature there was, and never more. Everybody was fine, but Daniel. And why was that, Daniel? Just like a movie. Okay, never mind. Chris Apples. Chris. <laughs> a young quartet on the rise with a promising legacy. <laughs> Never fulfilled. A tragic That's... story ends tonight at night. Died nasty. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'll never hey, it down. Where can people go if they want to listen to your music, buy your merch, see what you're up to? What's the website they can hit up? Uh, <laughs> oh no. It's on GoDaddy Parked right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where, yes. You know, amazing. You can go to old as dot com. Yes. Uh, signature QT is is where you can get all of our social handles. So okay. Cool. Signature QT. Signature QT. Great. Instagram. Everything is the same. TikTok. 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 Right. Uh, right. Whole bunch of our videos on on Instagram, and we are going to be recording our finally recording our champ CD sometime this year. Yes. Maybe, maybe come. Hey, buddy. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Maybe with KJ here. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I'd be, we'll I'd be honored. Get we'll some do, of that. We'll though. do episode 47. Pod, get that then. vocal pod action going on. There you go. Yeah, coming 2026. 2026. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the Midtown album. We're going to be like Jay-Z. We're going like to huh? be like Jay-Z. We're going to call it the Black Album. That's all it's going to be. You know? I got 99 problems. It's the big picture of Dan right on the front. Yeah. There it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that side. I said Dan, side. not Daniel. No. Said, yeah, that that's side. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> white side. Yeah. Daniel. <laughs> I just want to tell you that we went to a a diner today. Oh. Oh no. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, in Jersey, in, in New Jersey, Jersey, next to your hotel. And the yes. waitress walked up to us and said, "What are these? Uh-huh. Is this a religious thing?" <laughs> Are you guys Muslim? Oh, she said. Because he's dark. Oh. You're kind of brown. Oh you don't look Muslim. You're too light to be Muslim. And you you, you, you just have you a beard. The features. <laughs> the features. The you beard. look like a Viking. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. Welcome to New Jersey. So you can go yeah. to Signature QT or just that diner. <laughs> or that oh, diner. That's a great segue. And then you yeah. Can- yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll oh be performing gosh. at Mosque 57. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You can god. get our merch at Midtown Official. That is definitely B roll. You're going to have to. Dynasty.org. This is all one take, baby. It's amazing. <laughs> First take, quartet.com. Yeah, first right? take. And I'm plug uh, choral singing, too. I mean, I'm booking for the fall right now. I've got late summer, uh, August, and, and fall. This episode um, won't come out till next fall anyway. Right, so yeah, you're, exactly. You're, you're, you're <laughs> so, be editing for years. Turn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. got a lot of work Just, to do. If you want to get coached, yeah. hit, hit me up. What, yeah, where do they go doing. for that? Uh, you can email coral singing at gmail.com. That's Say that the again? Easiest, easiest one. Um, it's sort of like coral, except with an extra L. So coral... Because uh, it's for everybody. Uh, See, I needed that because yeah. I wouldn't have known Coral. that. Yeah, so like CoralSinging at gmail.com. You can also go to Coral.net and fill out a contact form, but okay. no one Love does that. It. You can just email me. And Dynasty? DynastyQuartet.com. I had to look it up to make sure. Oh. <laughs> you had to look up <laughs> DynastyQuartet.com? Well, I couldn't remember if it was .com or one of the other well, ones. Well, so, it's but yeah. .gov. Di- what was it going to be? It's not Dynasty. Die-nasty. I should have shared that with the wrong crowd. You sure did. I dashed it. Listen, if you didn't want that to be out there, you shouldn't have said it on a podcast with this group. With some of the loudest mouths in the society. So you got it. What a dirty The Quartet's first take quartet. At Gmail and Better Together Quartet at Gmail. If you're looking oh, for those. Better, okay. Yeah. yeah okay, all good. the quartets. All the quartets we'll at We'll plug Gmail. it all. We'll plug it all. So, <laughs> Awesome. Well, hey, I love you guys. I'm so grateful that you guys Thank came you up, man. Thank, Thank you for having us. appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for having and, us. Uh, can't wait to hear how your drive home oh, no. goes. Oh, yeah. Does anybody else want to drive? You can just watch Dateline NBC. That's right. I'm going to be watching the news all night just Anybody to else want to drive? Hey, listen, yeah, I, I got drive, spare rooms, so if you guys want to stay, you can. Yes. You leave it Leave it about 4.30 in the morning to get there. Do you have there. a couch that uh, Will can sleep on? <laughs> yeah, this is your couch, Will. You can sleep on this couch, brother. I'll sleep on one of these pieces. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll lay the back down for you. KJ, do you have a wardrobe that will take us to Narnia? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's the couch. You just fold back, and then you just go in. That's it. <laughs> let's, let's leave that we'll, we'll open up the couch yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was so boring Ugh. Yeah. Oh, 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 time. horrible absolutely so oh man <laughs> oh, alright 7th hour podcast appreciate you guys being on it thanks KJ alright 7th hour podcast Till next time
You're going to be my new voiceover for it. I know. I got it, right? It's so perfect. Amazing. I got to get it. <laughs> have you thought about legitimately doing that like as a job? Like, really? I think it's going to happen. I mean, I have a little bit.